Through the apocalypse. I'm Ben, and as always, I'm joined by Gaz. Hello. And Mike. Hello. Gaz is back from the dead. He is risen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Put so, that spear down. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't need that host. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, it's cancelled. Get out of my grave, bitch. <laughs> <sighs> You'd even got a nice little memorial plaque done, haven't we, Mike? <laughs> we did. Could have spent that on beer. It was tasteful, Gaz. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I just scraped it with a knife and a piece of wood, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that it's it's just a drift good. wood cross yeah. made at the, uh, the front. <laughs> I spent the money on beer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we knew that's what you'd want. Well, thank you. as long as you don't set the cross on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big. <laughs> Should we do the show? <laughs> yeah. um, today we're going to be speaking about the secrets of the Vatican. I will remind the boys that the six month no nonce policy is in effect, so we're not talking about the other nastiness. We're going to focus on the archives, the throne room. Et al. Et al. Yeah. Mm. It's going to be really hard not to make pedo priest jokes, though. Is you it? can make the jokes, we just can't really go into that much. <coughs> yeah, we'll just say, you know, we've nonced ourselves. <laughs> from the outset, there's a lot of nonsense going on in the Catholic Church. You'd so argue we'll, it's the nonce capital of the world. You would. Yeah. And I mean, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. There's also some, some weird, appar allegedly, apparently, maybe, some weird things kept down there. Yeah. Even if there's not, it's still fucking weird, the fact that it's this... I was thinking about this today. Wouldn't it be really useful to like the world's historians to be able to go in there freely and yeah, just, yeah. Uh, you know, build a big a, a picture of the past through these letters and well, things? It's like the Library of Alexandria was, it was mm. like all of mankind's accumulated knowledge. Yeah. Then it got destroyed. Yeah. You know, well, this is a similar thing, isn't it? It's they might as well be destroyed because nobody and they select who accesses it, don't they? Yes, so. usually you have to be a Catholic. Uh -huh. Oh, to wow. go in and have a look. None of us are in there. No. Nonce. <laughs> no, it's Catholic usually. <laughs> um, but first, we will do some weird news. And this is oh, some yeah. random shit we found on the net. It'll take us about 20 minutes, half an hour. And then we'll cut on with the main thrust mm. of today's topic. So what's up first, Mike? Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. First up, whoa, New York Post says that uh, non-stick frying pans can make your penis smaller. Stop putting your cock <laughs> in the frying pan! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Picture some sausages in a pan. Uh, um, frying pans might be having a negative effect on your sausage. A new right. study found that a chemical commonly found on non-stick pans and fast food wrappers may have a significant impact on endowment and can result in smaller schlongs. But isn't your schlong size already set, like, do you know what I mean? It's, well, it's uh, not going to shrink, is it? You wouldn't have thought so. That's what I... Th OK, carry on, that's what they say. Then there's a bit Alex Jones, wasn't he saying that that stuff inside the drinks carton was making you transsexual? Yeah, he was mad about it, he was opening them up and yeah. scraping in it out, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, the research, which took place in Italy, found that those who have been exposed to uh, parafluorkyl compounds, also re uh, referred to as PFCs, mm. had significantly smaller eggplants than those who hadn't, as well as lower semen quality. Mm. Also, they they're eating a lot of fried food, so their health's not fantastic as it is, is it? Right. Uh, PFCs are chemicals commonly used as water and oil repellents in cookware and textiles, according to the study published in this journal of clinical endocrinology and metabolism, adult males are more likely to accumulate the chemical in their body for an unknown reason, meaning the chemical could have a larger effect on them than other population. Uh, researchers examined 383 male high school students, including 212 who had been exposed to PFCs in northeast Italy through June 2017 and May. 
They took participants' blood to measure sexual hormones, examined semen samples, and yes, took several measurements on their growers, including length, circumference, testicular volume, and anogenital distance, otherwise um, the uh, Kendall region. Right. <laughs> And boy, those <coughs> chemicals have an effect on boys. Participants who weren't exposed to PFCs had tall boys an average length of 3.94 inches compared to the average of 3.44 inches in those who had. Um, exposed men were also one fifth of an inch less girthy. Half an inch, boys. Oh. Fucking hell, nothing left. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm supposed to give up sausages, though. I don't fry mine though, I put them in the oven these days. I tend to grill them. I used to fry them. Uh, well, the George Grill's Foreman. probably the best way. To, George Foreman's the best yeah. way. Oh well. I, I mean, mean, I don't have the grill, I just get George Foreman around to come and cook the noodles. <laughs> Piece of money nowadays. <laughs> it does make you wonder though what this shit we're putting in our body, doesn't it? I mean, look at that glypho sulfate with um, Monsanto and Roundup. Yeah. Yeah, that's a point. They knew it caused cancer, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, cancer of the, um... Sorry for the noise. I've lost my train of thought. Someone continue. I, <laughs> I genuinely do think the food we're eating is killing us. Oh, yeah, I, I don't mean, think I, that's I, a conspiracy at all. Yeah, I think at least they're making a sale at, at the very least. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like a, a whole big conspiracy circle, starting with the food suppliers, going round to Big Pharma, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's all about money again. It, yeah, I think it might even be less sinister than, uh, you know, oh, make them sick to sell them the drugs. I honestly think it's just like, we don't give a fuck what yeah. we're giving them. We yeah. want maximised profits. That's it. They're fucking, yeah. gives a fuck about these mouth-breathing sheeple fuckers. They die, more come along. <laughs> they keep breeding. It's wonderful. Yeah. And we keep shoveling them full of shit. Mad cow disease. Yeah. We had that incident in this country with the lasagnas, all had horse meat mm. in them. Yeah, but well, that's not a big thing in Europe, and they were from Europe. It's just that the, the supermarkets are there labelled them as beef. Yeah, but yeah, but it, we're a country that doesn't eat horses, so I've eaten horses. It's all right, it tastes like beef. On general, we're a country that doesn't eat horses, aren't we, guys? I would say so. Yeah, it, it only you know it's a, what's it called, Chev chevalier or something, something like that. Horse. Not that I move in the highest of culinary circles, but it's never I've never come across. A horse. Oh, <laughs> if, they, I, if they labelled horse lasagnas in uh, the supermarket. That ain't flying mm. off the shelves. Yeah, I'd try it, I guess. But, try it. But that's not the. the but I, get, I get your point, Mike. Your point is they're, they're fucking deception, isn't it? Yeah, they, they'll put anything in there and tell us it's something else. Or, you, or they don't even, maybe not even deceive us. We don't look. We don't know. We we we. I think live under this assumption that because um, I have this joke of my my good mate Ash, and we always say it sarcastically to each other when he's bought something from the supermarket. Uh, a Red Bull or something. He's like, but Gaz, it can't be bad for me. I bought it in a shop, and I'm like, yeah, no, no, buy six. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So like, we we live under this yeah. uh, fucking false assumption that like, oh, ever, they're not going to sell us things that will hurt us. Well, Red Bull is mm -hmm. actually banned in most European countries. Wait, well, it's like energy drinks, full stop, are just really not, not good, good for you. For you. Yeah, it's like I, a ban for children, maybe. I mm. think. Well, and it's like, I think it's because we we have all these safety standards on so many other things. Like, you, you know, your car needs an MOT and all this. Uh, even your clothing's got to meet certain standards, hasn't it? And things to be sold. So we, we like to assume the same for our food, but it, I don't think... I don't know, but there's a percentage a of rat feces as allowed mm. in yeah, food, Yeah, but there's a it? percentage of dead insects, there's a yeah. percentage of rat feces. I mean, it's not a very big percent, mm. but it's allowed in there. It's it'll go up. this much won't hurt you. Yeah, it'll go up as we leave the EU. Well, it, it will, because we won't have to... They can throw in the arseholes and the eyeballs again after we leave the EU, because all the food standards are fucking going down there in the window. Well, that's a brilliant link into my next one, actually, my next news, if you want. Arseholes and the eyeballs. Ready for it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw this. <laughs> wow, I didn't. Uh, Tesco customer finds anus in tin beef curry halfway through eating meal. Wow. Wait till you see the picture, man. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, a horrified man said he was left unable to eat for two days after claiming to find what looks like a cat's anus in his £1.50 Tesco <laughs> canned curry. I need to distinguish the animal's anus. <laughs> Maybe he's got a cat. <laughs> Judging it on size, uh, uh, support worker Andrew Lee was halfway through his meal when he found a greyish skin coloured tube on the end of his fork. The 30 year old said he was left so sick by his finding, which he thought looked like a belly button or cat's anus, he didn't eat for two days, calling it the first diet that's worked. <laughs> Even Tesco described it as a thing in their first <laughs> reply to Andrew. After complaining to the supermarket giant online, Tesco immediately replied, stating, I would suggest 
taking this product with the thing and receipt into your local store for this to be investigated properly by my colleagues at the customer service desk. That's weird. <laughs> or describe to the listeners better. It's a cat's anus. Uh, it could be an anus, or it could also be like it makes me think of like an alien's snout or something, you know? Like yeah, the, um, the little thing that pops at their mouth. Yeah, except more flaccid. Either way, it shouldn't be in a fucking beef curry. No. Should it? What the fuck? <laughs> no. I mean, <laughs> wow. Oh, here we go. However, Tesco have said, since said, the anus is in fact a large blood vessel and asked Andrew to return the things that can be investigated further. Andrew from Swansea and Wales said it like a belly button or cat's anus. It was a shock. It's the first time I've noticed something like that before. There was the beginning of a tube, then it was cut off. There was a bit of string on it too. It's weird. I don't think it's fat. It's super smooth. The texture is like silk. Oh, I touched oh. it. Someone said it could be a blood vessel, but do they get that big? Well, it depends where it's from, doesn't it? Why would you touch it's from it? A fucking giant beef cow, then possibly, maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't touch it, mate. <laughs> he probably had his cock in it the day. Oh. That's why you couldn't eat for two days. You're too busy fucking it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> Poor man. I just like the fact he's like, take your receipt in as well. <laughs> Who fucking keeps the receipt? Uh, I'd, I'd be saying, I'd be thinking, I don't want the money back for the tin. I want a lot fucking more than that. Never yeah, mind the receipt. The, day, the tin's got fucking Tesco written on it. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you go. think I got take, it? Take the fucking tin and this thing back and give uh, me another beef curry. We can only do refunds with a valid proof of purchase. So rules and rules, I'm afraid. Well, even so, I'd be selling my story to the mirror and making some money <laughs> like this guy. Yeah. Well. But then you're probably known as Cat's Anus Boy. <laughs> well, I'm hating it. <laughs> yeah, you'll be calling me that when I'm uh, waving the money in front of your face. Come here, you wish you had some of this. You're in the national you? papers, everyone will recognise your face. Yeah, they won't. They'll say, ah, oh, Cat's Anus the Boy. The people have got a short attention span. They won't know Not in for a few things days. like that, they haven't. They <laughs> haven't. <laughs> In your local, the, the nation maybe, but in your local town, you will forever be oh, anus yeah. boy. In all fairness, you won't be able to go back to that Tesco again, would you? <laughs> Here he comes. Here's <laughs> anus boy. With his fucking new BMW. Mm. <laughs> Still, I bet he wish he hadn't hit that bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if he'd got it in his mouth and chewed on it. Oh. Then spat it out and then saw what a bit... Oh, I, I mean, to be fair, we always eat one probably when we have sausages, but... At least it's minced up. Yeah, and it, you cut it <coughs> in there. I love a good sausage, mate. Mm. Oof. Can't beat it. I don't care if it's just mashed up bits of shit. I don't care. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do like his closing line. I won't be having those tins again, and I won't look at cats the same either. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he hasn't got a cat. That's like the real tragedy of this story, if he has to give his cat up for adoption. <laughs> Getting fucking PTSD from every yeah, time every his time cat that, turned around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I nearly ate one of those. Uh, oh, well, well, I guess the fucking lesson to be learned here, ladies and gents, and I know it's hard because times are fucking tough for everybody. It's tight, you know, for me right now. But eating curry from tins is, uh, especially a meat based curry from a tin it's never going to be oh you're not getting good meat in there it's never going to be your best health what you choice. say people are forced man people know, are starving know, they go to food banks and i know three million in, uh, go to food banks but half oh, of them work get a tin of beans man it's gonna. <laughs> yeah, so get a lovely tin of beans, can you? You ain't finding no anus in a tin of beans. Yeah, tin of beans, a loaf yeah. of fucking smart price bread, you must, you'll be alright. Like, yeah. Live like a king for two days on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, I lived that fucking tomato soup for a few days this week. One bowl of soup a day. That's, wow. That's like starvation <laughs> levels. It was, man, for the first. I had. For the listener, I've been ill. I had like, in four days, one bowl of soup, two halves of bananas. Uh, and one round of toast in four days. Then though, it all started, came on like, I had two tins of soup, then oh. yesterday it was a curry um, and soup and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Today, egg and chips. Mm. It's better now then. Oh, yeah. mate. <laughs> when you haven't been able to eat for four days. I'm yeah. sorry if there are any listeners in Star 
concentration camps or anything like that, you know. I don't think we have many listeners. Sucks for you. I don't think they let our mobile phones go <laughs> <laughs> places, guys. No, they sneak them in. We don't have many North Korean life. dissidents. <laughs> uh, I, was, you know, I was trying to think who might going to offend by talking about how starving I've been. Uh, about 50% you know, of the world's population. Have we got any listeners? <laughs> <laughs> what are they? It's an F. They live in shit old countries, don't they? But, you know, <laughs> so is this one. Uh, it, it's all right for a few few weeks yet, isn't it? Yeah, we're the end of March. Oh, my, oh shit! Well, at least my birthday will be all right. I've one last good birthday. Woo! Anyway, well, that's not. We're not Brexiting today. I can't Brexit. <laughs> it, it will fucking break me. Life's too miserable. So what's next? I beat the driver, <laughs> test positive for all detectable illegal drugs. <laughs> what a fucking man. Well, he shouldn't be driving, but... Um, I beat the police have arrested a driver who tested positively for pretty much every drug in the book. Wow. I beat the maybe known the world over as a party island, where illicit substances are all too common amongst revellers. This story takes such excesses to a whole new level. In the early hours of New Year's Day, local police on the Balearic Island apprehended a 30-year-old man, 31-year-old man who was driving dangerously and erratically. When the officers carried out all possible drug tests available to them, they found the partygoer had ingested every single one of the substances their machinery can detect. <laughs> These included cannabis, amphetamines, methamphetamines, cocaine and opioids. Jesus. Whether the man was also over the alcohol limit remains unclear <laughs> and quite obviously irrelevant. <laughs> um, officers... pissed as well, that's taking the piss. <laughs> yeah. you know what I, mean? I want to know if this guy's still alive. Officers also searched the drugged up Merrymaker's vehicle, finding everything from pink and purple pills, more cocaine, and a brown substance they haven't been able to identify yet. I think that's heroin. Or poo. Um, or poo. <laughs> Could be poo. Could be heroin. Nah, they poo. identify that, just give it a sniff. Yeah. Um, Why, what do you mean they can't identify it? Don't they do it like in uh, 80s, you know, montage cut, cut right? movies where you like stick your finger in it and just go... No, because it might be poo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alsatian shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let him go. <laughs> yeah, well, fair play to him. That was weird in movies, though, wasn't it? They would yeah. fucking yeah. find some white powder and just go... Mwah, 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 mwah. Mm. Yeah, it's cocaine. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Ninety percent pure. <laughs> Grown on the north slope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the police just keep a drugs monkey around with them, like just, <laughs> it's some bloke who's just totally rattled with the like. Oh, like uh, Paradise PD. They've got Hobo Cop. <laughs> Hobo and he's Cop. and he's the um, the bomb detection robot. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, th th this guy. I mean, could we just go up a little tiny bit again? I'm trying to imagine the fucking... Uh, where it said the list of drugs. I'm not... There you go. Oh, here we go. So, cannabis, take you down. Amphetamine, speed, up. Woo! Going for days. Methamphetamine. Now, I thought that was the same thing as speed. I'm not that much of an expert. Is that crystal meth? No. I'm methamphetamine. I don't know. It's meth. It's crystal meth, isn't it? Possibly, but I thought crystal meth was made from... No, I don't know. I think crystal meth got crack in it as well. So I thought... Anyway, either way, it's a bad one. Yeah. Cocaine. You don't need cocaine if you've already got speed in you. That's just greedy. <laughs> and then opioids. Just, what, fucking ruin the whole thing? You put all that fucking uppers in you and then like, oh, let's go with the biggest fucking downer on the world and put some opioids in. Unless <laughs> it's the order he took him in. So he was on the amphetamine, methamphetamine and cocaine. Ah, yeah. Then oh, decided, they oh shit, I've got to drive home. home. I've yeah. got to drive home. So he smoked a joint. I'll let that with some <laughs> weed and heroin. I'll let it with some weed and heroin, it'll be fine. <laughs> I'll meet in the middle. I'll let it drive home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking genius, I am. I don't know, everyone doesn't do this. <laughs> I fucking love my beaver. Woo, woo. Also, why didn't help, he had a neon glow stick on his head and blowing a whistle at the window as he was driving the car. <laughs> what does he say when he's swirling so across the road? And the old people attached to his grill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they probably didn't help. Have you been taking anything you shouldn't, son? Um, have you got a pen, officer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. 
Well, thank God he didn't hurt anybody, so it's safe to say, yeah, good lad, go on. But, well, no, not good lad, I'm sorry, I shouldn't make light of it, really. He's a, did it say a taxi driver? <laughs> no, he's a driver. Oh, just a driver. Yeah, so he's, it's the he's early hours of New Year's Day. It's the early hours of New Year's Day. drugs, fair enough. Just get yeah. an adult, you know, but don't drive. Plus, if yeah, you're on that much amphetamine, you shouldn't be able to walk the length of the fucking island. Well, yeah. you, should, you shouldn't have bothered him. You should have left the heroin up. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> anyway. In all fairness, early hours of New Year's Day, them clubs don't fucking close till like six, seven in the morning. There's no one on the streets. Yeah. He, he probably felt a bit iffy, though, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But I had to leave early, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be time for a lie now. <laughs> in another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 what a night, though. Uh, <laughs> like that. Uh, Oh, uh, what a night. <laughs> Should we um, call that weird news? Yeah. Do some more at the end? Yeah. So uh, let's cut on to the uh, the Vatican and the archives and various other little factoids and, of course, the throne room and the statue. Let's start with a little bit of fact. that Vatican City is the smallest country in the world, encircled by a two-mile border with Italy. Vatican City is an independent city-state that covers just over 100 acres making it one-eighth the size of New York's Central Park. Wow. Uh, Vatican City is governed as an absolute monarchy, with the Pope at its head. The Vatican mints its own euros, prints its own stamps, it issues passports and license plates, it operates media outlets, it has its own flag and anthem, and a football team, no I to say that, football team, yeah. One government function it lacks, taxation. Museum and mission fees, stamp and souvenir sales and contributions generate the Vatican's revenue. And believe me, it's fucking expensive to get in there. Oh, it's yes. a museum, the I Vatican was, Museum. I was about to say we can prefix this week's discussion unusually by saying one of us has actually been there. You did. Yes, yeah. I think it was about 60 euros to get in. Wow. And I think it was another 20 or 30 euros to get the um, sort of fast track, otherwise you're literally stood in the heat mm. of the Italian day. Uh next to a very large wall. Let's remember the Vatican yeah. is a fortress. Yeah. It's got some fucking big walls. Mm. And you're just stood there for two hours when you get in unless you spend the extra 20, 30 euros. And... So there's 90, 90 euros straight away. Fair wow. play to you for going, though, I don't think I could have been convinced. I would have gone and waited in a bar around the corner. <laughs> that was just the museum, but though. You can go and walk around St. Peter's just... Square for nothing. I might be being thick. The Vatican City. I know, like... Mr. Popey man lives there, and uh, I take it all his top generals live there. Yeah, right. his top top men. Yeah, his, his top fucking geezers, they live there, and they've got that security force Swedish thing that lives Swiss there. Guard. Swiss guard. Swiss guard. Right, and I guess there's some cleaners and servants, but they'll all go home. Vatican police as well. Right. But who, are, there, are there like Vatican civilian citizens, mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to say. Who are they? I believe the age of consent is 12 in the Vatican. Isn't Didn't it? know that. Um, well, no, that's not the answer to my fucking question, <laughs> mate. Like, what the fuck? Like, you're already breaking the fucking policy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So, are they there, are, there, are, there are about 600 Vatican citizens. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Right. It just popped in yeah, my head. It's, so. down, it's down in the article that there's about 600 okay. civil citizens of the Vatican. Right. Basically, most of them are abroad. They're like mm. priests out on diplomatic missions, things like that. So everyone there is connected to the... They have to. They must be. It must be a stupid question to ask. Connected to the Catholic Church. Oh, yeah, if you're living so within no, the walls like, of, the of the Vatican, yeah. yeah. Nobody's moved in there from outside who's like, you know, um, I'm really, I'm a really good builder, so, you know... I'm well, they don't the, need you. Everything's built, mate. <laughs> I'm, the, you know, I'm the DIY man. I'm the Andy man. So I might as well live on site. Do I get to live in the city? You, well, you think it's, got, it's literally, you, you go through Vatican City on the mm. fucking metro line, right, on the underground. Like one stop. Yeah, you just like, literally, <laughs> do, 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 you just go Not through it. It's, 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 you wouldn't know you were in Vatican City mm -hmm. if you strolled into it. It's only the actual Vatican itself yeah, okay. that's got the walls around it. The rest of it is just like any other street in Rome. Fair enough. Except just, you see a few more priests and nuns trotting around. I get, yeah, that makes sense. Can I just say I was wrong about that age of consent, but it was the age of 12 up until 2013. Wow. Well, oh, that's shocking, isn't it? What, what, so, do you, what do you expect? So let's say I was that way inclined, some sort of nasty-minded person could take a 12-year-old, did you say 12? 12? 12-year-old 12 from Rome, where it's not legal for them to have sex, take them into the Vatican, just down the road, Yeah. and all of a sudden... 
Atta boy! Fuck. It's almost as if they wanted it mm -hmm. that way. Strange, I don't... God, we've got to get off the... Look, we've got to talk yeah, about the yeah, Vatican yeah. itself. It just popped in my head and I just thought <laughs> to say it. Right, so... St. Peter's Basilica sits atop a city of the dead, including its namesake's tomb. Sounds lovely. A That's Roman... nice, isn't it? Nice place to build. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the city well, they built there. it on top of St. Peter's grave because Jesus oh. told St. Peter that he was the rock that he would build his church upon. Oh. Symbolic, you see. Oh. Or they made that up just so they could do something like build it up a city. Well, St. Peter was killed in Rome. Oh, right. He existed then, didn't he? Yeah, he was killed in Rome. Whether it's not the original the guy that was knocking around with Jesus or not, it's a different yeah. matter. But yeah, ah. he was killed in Rome and he was crucified upside down. Wow, is yeah. that worse? Probably, I imagine so. I guess, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's horrible to me. Actually, you'd lose guy. consciousness quicker, wouldn't you? Uh, hopefully. Yeah, well you would, all the blood's rushing to your head. You'd probably wake up pretty quick as soon as I nail it. Oh no, you'd remain conscious you? longer. Because all the blood's rushing to your head, you'd remain conscious longer. Oh. Uh. Well, either yeah. way, it's not going to be yeah. nice. Well, yes. Um, so when a great fire levelled much of Rome in AD 64, Emperor Nero, seeking to shift blame from himself, accused the Christians of starting the blaze. He executed them by burning them at the stake, tearing them apart with wild beasts and crucifying them. Wow. Among those crucified was St. Peter, disciple of Jesus Christ, leader of the Apostles and the first Bishop of Rome, who was supposedly buried in a shallow grave on Vatican Hill. By the 4th century, an official recognition of the Christian religion in Rome, Emperor Constantine began construction of the original basilica atop the ancient burial ground, with what was believed to be the tomb of St. Peter at its centre. The present basilica, built, started in the 1500s, sits over a maze of catacombs and St. Peter's suspected grave. Popes didn't live at the Vatican until the 14th century. Mm. Probably because it wasn't strong enough. It was built on a load of dead bodies. Once yeah, probably because of the walls up. The age of consent was too high. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that fucking no nonce policy is up to a Can we have a subject that doesn't involve any of this next week? <laughs> Can't even be linked to it in any way. Right. Uh, <laughs> so even after the construction of the original basilica, popes lived principally at the Latarian paths across Rome. They even left the city altogether in 1309 when the papal court moved to Avignon, France, after King Philip VI arranged for a French cardinal to be elected Pope. Seven popes, all French, ruled from Avignon, and the papacy did not return to Rome until 1377, uh, by which time the Latrian Palace had burned and the Vatican started to be used as a papal residence. Much repair work needed done because the Vatican had fallen into such disrepair that wolves dug for bodies in the cemetery and cows were wandering through the basilica. <laughs> The Swiss Guard. Now, these are the guys you see in the ridiculous uniforms. Yeah. Don't tell them they're ridiculous uniforms. These guys are pretty hard. They're yeah, Swiss they're... Special Forces trained. Yeah. Um, They'll snap your spine, man. Yeah. They will. That, and also, that nice little... And they're little... bred from birth, like, specifically no. for this. Up no, in Sweden no, no, somewhere. no. That's um, what I remember hearing. Are they the unsullied? <laughs> no, they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not their nuts cut off. <laughs> no, it's like, you know what I mean? They're, like, they're prepared for this all their fucking lives. Like, they go to the right school, the right, you know, in order to get into the training to do yeah. this. And the uniform was designed by Michelangelo, yeah, not one of his finest hours. Not the turtle the painter. At the time, yeah. though, <laughs> you don't know, at the time, that could have been like some swish fucking... You know, well, yes, it was. I mean, that beret and it is quite fancy and it's very brightly coloured. It's not really much good now, though, and it means camouflage is important. They're armed with handguns as well, aren't they? The, the guy's not in ceremonial dress, yes, and there's always plenty of them walking around plain clothed. Because one of them was shot, we talked about this, I'm sure, and um, there was a young one found dead. I think he'd been bullied or something. I can't remember the details, I should shut up. But anyway, yeah, they are genuinely badass guys who might look like clowns. Are they... They don't actually still wear that one yeah, uniform. Yeah, on ceremonial they, duty, yeah. Oh dear. Are um, they running that stuff? I've no idea, probably. For the listener, they're like big sort of pantaloons. Well, it's they? 15th century dress. Yeah. It's a 15th century European Renaissance dress. But they do carry those big um, halberds with the massive blade on there. Called the, that's called the Vatican Longsword, and it will take you from head to crotch in one blow. Wow. Well, fair play to them. They've been protecting the pontiff since the since 1506. That's when Pope Julius II, following the footsteps of many European courts at the time, hired one of the Swiss mercenary forces for his personal protection. 
The Swiss Guards are all in Vatican City is strictly to protect the safety of the Pope, and although it's the world's smallest standing army, and appears to be strictly ceremonial, its soldiers are extensively trained and highly skilled marksmen, and they are all still Swiss. Yes. Swiss. And they do have to, they're taken from the Swiss volunteer forces and basically put through special forces training, mm -hmm. and then they might get into the Swiss Guard if they're good enough. Because they're going to be jack of all trades nowadays. One day you're out doing that, the next and day you're going to counter surveillance. Kid. You know, you're literally trained to do everything. Get rid Makes of bodies. Sense. Get rid yeah. of bodies. <laughs> Maybe. Probably. Yeah. Give alibis for uh, priests who were not, definitely not at the brothel that night. No, no. Probably escorting priests from the yeah. brothel, or cardinals from a brothel, yeah. maybe, at some point in history, I'd imagine. Do you think they get... They're the ones who have to... When the cocaine is delivered to the Vatican and stuff, they're the ones who have to accept the delivery. <laughs> I was going... Cause what I was going to say was, do you think they're sent out to pick up the coke? But then I thought about the uniforms. And like, <laughs> it's, it's a bit obvious, isn't it? it? But then again, if it's in, in the Vatican City, they're the law. Exactly. So I'd say they'd have it brought in rather yeah. than go out. Do you reckon if you're like a hapless Domino's pizza guy and the Pope's ordered a pizza... <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you must. You gotta go through those. Like. People in the Vatican must order stuff from the rest of the city that needs to, from Rome that needs delivering. Amazon. Well, yeah. So there must be a way of there must yeah. be a system. You must have to go up to the post gatehouse or whatever. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mr. Amazon. Yeah, I don't think no, you do. I'm not trying to kill the Pope. <laughs> what the fuck? Get the gun out of his face. <laughs> it's a fucking Amazon. It's a fucking cat basket for. Whatever, you know, anyway. It won't call though if you guys you deliver it to the Pope. It'd be so. I need a signature on this. <laughs> the Pope has a door. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> they call a duty or something. Um, <laughs> it's a dollar short. <laughs> oh, Johnny. <laughs> it's a dollar short. <laughs> oh, you're one minute late. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I mean, Shit, I mean, bollocks. Oh, see ya. Shit, wanker. Wanker. On to the next one, and then one of them Swedish blokes shoots your tyres out. <laughs> Swiss. <laughs> oh, yeah, Swiss. I mean. yeah. And then another one appears from the back seat in Garotche. <laughs> are you under 18? You didn't hide it the pizza boxes. That's <laughs> how good they are. Oh, well. <sighs> Don't go there. <laughs> I wouldn't deliver pizza to the Vatican. <laughs> you don't go, I wouldn't fucking go. Now, it's several times during the Vatican's history, popes have, es popes have escaped through a secret passageway. <laughs> it's a half a mile long, elongated, <laughs> covered passageway, uh, the Passetto di Borgio, the Borgo even, mm. provided my Italian. It was constructed to link the Vatican with the fortified castle Sant'Angelo on the banks of the Tiber River. I've been there, and it is one hell of a fucking castle. I can tell you that. Yeah, man. Um, you ain't getting into that. It's it's a fucking. It's literally exactly what it says on the tin. It's a castle of the angels. It's fucking sweet. You got these big statues of angels on the bridge leading why, to so it. Why wouldn't I get in? Well, if you're an invading force. Uh, I'm not invading. I'm oh, if you just want to go in on a Sunday, or Saturday afternoon, that's fine. Just stroll in, pay the money. In fact, get a Roma card because that gets you into like three or four attractions for nothing. Good tip. So if there's a zombie apocalypse, you want to be in the Vatican. You want to be in that castle? Yeah, definitely. I wanted to go to Rome, but. Everyone in Milan put me off, so I didn't. <laughs> Maybe one day, though, with the, with the missus. Also you know. worth pointing out, the Pope would, Popes back in the day, because they weren't so frivolous about the whole um, celibacy thing, uh, used to keep their mistresses at that castle at night time, trot over using the secret tunnel, pop up, go and have a bit of fun, Surely. go back. Sure. They dressed as commoner and go to taverns. I've no idea. But Probably. if you really believe this fucking God stuff, right, surely doing that then makes you know you're condemned and you're like, oh, you know, I've really fucked this up, but I just love shagging these hoes. Two reasons. You're the Pope, you're mm -hmm. God's representative on Earth, and you can absolve yourself of any sin that oh, you fucking want to. Fucking loopholes. Number two, <laughs> and number two, remember back in the day when that was mm. happening, 1277, things like that, it was really sort of early age... Um, you know, med medieval period before of smart history phones. before smartphones. <laughs> the popes weren't men of God. They were guys that schemed and plotted and backstabbed their way into that position. Because mm. at the end of the day, even if they didn't believe it, it's you're the most important I, man in yeah. Europe as the pope. If you've right. got Catholic Europe and you're the head of that church, the kings have to do what you say. When power becomes 
comes mistresses, that's, doesn't it? And that's why earlier, when they said about the French popes all living in France, well, the French king has got the pope under his thumb living in his country. He's yeah. the most, therefore, ergo, he's the most powerful man in Europe. Because he controls the pope. Like a pope it. Hey! hey. Uh, the pun crane is yours. It is, that's the thing, that's the first one. For now. We haven't had a pun for a while. No. So, so what's um, next? There's some, well, I don't know, if you want to, like, when I mentioned you about the 600 citizens, most of them live abroad. Um, no, no. 71 cardinals, 109 members of the Swiss Guard, 51 members of the clergy, and one nun inside <laughs> the Vatican's walls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, most of them are on diplomatic missions, so obviously that, that, you know, some priest who's out there, mm. you know, being a, an ambassador. What, he smokes weed? Mm. Yeah. He's out there, man. Yeah, so I'll tell you about the archives, shall I? Yeah. Um, the Vatican, secret Vatican archives, or Archivum Secretarum Vaticanum, yeah, in isn't, Latin. Isn't there some um, sort of discussion over whether it could be more translated as to mean private rather than, uh, <coughs> secret. than secret? Yeah. yeah. Which, uh, I guess they are different, aren't they? Private, secret. Um, yeah. But only negligibly so sure. because yeah. they're not letting anyone fucking see it well, so it is secret isn't it? well they're the pope's personal property effectively so i suppose they are private yeah. but they're also secret in the fact that if he doesn't want you to go down there you ain't going down there yeah it's a central property in the vatican for city acts and documents needed by the holy see which is the chair of the pope throne of the pope effectively that's what the holy see is they're uh, founded in 1611 by pope paul v he acts as sovereign of the vatican uh, but the city owns the archives He's not like going in there without him saying so. Yeah. Um, they contain the state papers, correspondence, papal accounting books, yeah. and many other documents which the church has accumulated over the years. So everything like from receipts for the amount of artwork they've got. Mm. They commission a piece of art, the artist will write them a receipt. Off your trot. Yeah. They are estimated to contain 85 kilometres, and that is 53 miles of shelving. 53 Four. miles of shelves. That's insane. That's a big DVD collection. Isn't it, it is. It uh, is. Big porn collection. Big, yeah. Well, that's Funny one enough. of the conspiracies, isn't yeah. it? Yes. That it's the world's biggest uh, erotica yeah. pornography <laughs> collection. Uh, the oldest surviving document is in the 8th century, uh, which is a. Uh, well, no, yeah, sorry, that's. Uh, it's in the 8th century, but notable documents include Henry VIII's marriage annulment request <laughs> for his marriage to Catherine oh. of Aragon. Can we have that? Well, it was uh, sent to him, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I suppose he needed to know. Didn't of course, he? it. Um, he said no, didn't he? Yeah. So it led to uh, the breakaway of England from the papal yoke, formation of the Church of England. I'm so glad split. that happened. I'm sorry, but Enough. I could not have grown up in a Catholic country like that. Imagine if we all went to Catholic school. Yeah. That would suck, wouldn't it? Well, mind you, I so I was christened as a kid, but I got no fucking idea what type of church is that. Then what? Brand is that? Could be anything, mate. Probably Church of England. <laughs> Could be anything. Really? Could be any form of Christianity, to be fair. I've got a fucking clue which yeah. one. It's one of the main Probably ones. Probably Church of England. It wasn't a weird what, one, like that. Do you know what church it was in? Yeah. Do you know what? I haven't got a fucking Seventh clue. Seventh Advent Hoppists. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. but I don't, so I'm not. I don't think I'm definitely not a Catholic. The only in my family is a Catholic. It, was, it wasn't that one. It was what, the other one. Church of England. Yeah. yeah, it was that one. Same as me. Yeah. I wasn't christened. Uh, Eden! Get out no, I'll tell you when I went to the church, I caught fire. You couldn't be the Prime Minister then, could you? I don't know, fuck it. I'm not making it up. It's not America, is it? But like, you know, imagine that, Teresa. Oh, I didn't, fuck it, I don't want to talk about it. Anyway. Um, actually, I'm going to mention Brexit briefly. Okay. <laughs> um, after the split, England turned its back on the continent, reminiscent of Brexit today. Fair enough. Transcripts from the trial of Galileo. Do you know about him? Apart from the Bohemian Rhapsody, Galileo, Galileo. Now, Galileo. Okay, let me try and answer, because if, if this is your first episode, history's not my strong point. Galileo, I think he had something to do with astronomy. He did. Look at it up at the stars. He put forward the revolutionary concept of the time, that the yeah. Earth actually revolved around the sun and not the other way around. And he was tortured for that, Fuck wasn't he? Yeah. He was um, arrested by the Inquisition, let's say. Okay. Put under house arrest. Slapped about a bit. And mainly, it wasn't a question of science. The Pope had actually said, yeah, it seems plausible. But his work debunked Aristotle. Okay. And who said that it was the other way around. Mm -hmm. So, and most of uh, Christian theology is based on Aristotle. Okay. Uh. But 
And they thought, well, if it was disproved, it could bring the whole system crashing down. Did they kill him? No, they, um, he had friends in high places and the Vatican settled for burning his books instead of his body. Well, that's yeah. nice, then. <laughs> Um, because, because they weren't that very reasonable of you. Well, because because, they, because they weren't that bothered. They were like, well, because mm. the Vatican, it did do science. It, remember, the, the only people that were educated at this point were the few individuals like Galileo who were wealthy, or priests. And priests, the, if you were like your average villager, chances are the only guy in your village that could read and write would be the priest. Yeah. So they're the only educated people about. Well, another intelligent group at the time would have been whoever I'm descended from. Obviously. No, just some Welsh people living, <laughs> living in squalor. Yeah, probably eating their own shit at this point. What? Yeah. <laughs> they were fucking cavemen, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> they were fucking recognisable human beings. They were only just. <laughs> <laughs> they were a proud Celtic family they were writing, farming the rich soil of Wales, guys. Writing, there you go. Yeah, writing poems about sheep that they've loved. <laughs> um, That's every Welshman. Farmed. <laughs> Mowed. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's the kind of shit that's in there, you know, that, that, that sort of historical mm. stuff is, like that. Is there also, I read, every single apparently correspondence between every Pope, like, throughout to Yeah, the all the pa- every single papal correspondence is in there, so every yeah. letter a Pope has ever written, there's probably a copy of it what, down there, and a reply. What an amazing mm. document of history. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like, of the attitudes of the times, of the real thoughts and speech patterns and things of people at the, the time. Politics, well, the politics, the backstabbing, vote. the way they're trying to yeah. cultivate alliances, things of, like that. Of the most influential, powerful people in the world, which is why we'll never fucking have access to it. But it's such a shame, isn't it? Imagine mm. what history people could get from that and the education we could all get from the understanding we could have of the past. Like, it would probably be vastly different, wouldn't it? But... Well, the whole point of recording history, in my opinion, has always been so if you're in a similar situation, if you're in a bad situation, you can look back and find someone else has been in that similar situation and look what they did and did it work or not and learn from it. That's the point of recording history. It's experience, isn't it? Experience. It's interesting. And if, you know, it's saying I was here. Yeah. But I just think it just shows the fucking... The selfishness and the yep. closed-mindedness of it—that's it, a problem of concentrated power. And it can't be shared for the greater That's good it. of our understanding as yeah. a people. But that leads us onto a nice little segue. There is what's the stuff they don't want you to know they've got in there. Ooh, and dead that's, where, that's where I've been doing my research <laughs> on the more conspiracy side of things. I could have sat there and looked at every single fucking document, and I did watch a bit of a video, and it was like, "This is a letter from the Pope to the Seventh Dalai Lama," and you're like. Uh, okay. Quite interesting. Yeah. I was say, yeah. <laughs> no, it was just about fucking. He wanted to let some friars into Tibet to okay. preach to the people. Mm. But it was a sort of um, interfaith relationships, I suppose. If you find that interesting. Yeah. Mm. Dirty bastard. So I've got ten <laughs> things that are um, diabolical things that are allegedly kept in the Vatican okay. archives. Uh, number ten. To a countdown. Ooh. The world's largest porn collection. Dun dun dun! Uh, wouldn't surprise me. A giant spank bank. Yeah. Copenhagen's uh, Museum Erotica claims the Vatican has the world's largest porn collection after them, or before them even. Uh, a number of eyewitnesses claim to have seen thousands of erotic volumes, and let's not forget all that erotic art that's trotted about. Yeah. So, uh, do you think Although, the, the priests are like, look, we, we read would've... this stuff so we know what to warn the people not to <laughs> do? <laughs> It's so we know what you're capable of. Yeah. Yeah. I assume they confiscated this sort of stuff. Oh, they confiscated it, locked it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah also, so it's not going to be good porn then, it's like reading porn. That's not. Oh, it'll be like crudely hand drawn little comics. Okay. Because I don't want to go down in the back again and have to read myself off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but remember, there's a lot of the statues in the Vatican have been de penised. Yeah. And that is a genuine thing. Across all of uh, uh, sort of definitely Europe, they have in the Vatican, and a fig leaf has been sort of crudely uh, plastered over where it should be. It was a movement in sort of society at the time, and like they started off with their cocks, and it wasn't a problem. No one was bothered. Then society sort of changed, and suddenly people were bothered by the cocks, so all the cocks had to go. Yeah, and well, they were covered up. Started in the Vatican, as one of the popes mm. basically thought that the uh, the penises, all the exposed penises on on show. 
were giving his priests lustful thoughts. So he went round in the middle of the night and with a hammer and chisel and started taking off all the penises. To be fair, he's probably right to have done that. <laughs> I don't know, though, like, just the arrogance with of hindsight, it, though. With hindsight. This amazing sculpture that he's done. Maybe, maybe, back, on, oh, yeah. maybe it backfired on him. Maybe they'd have been allowed to look at the statues while uh, this would happen. There you go. Oh, yeah. I could, that could be it. But the other I've question got a is, feeling that there was some dodgy stuff going on the before then. Though. The other question that springs to mind is: Is there a basket of stone dongs lying around somewhere? <laughs> yeah, there probably is. Yeah. They could like imagine if you could re like recomplete the Michelangelo statue. You know, it would suddenly fucking quadruple in value. Yeah. Wouldn't it? So, didn't yeah. It? yeah. But would you have to chisel the fig leaf off then? Are they showing them? I think they were like crudely plastered on. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They weren't like carved on or anything. Yeah. Um, Eating two cocks. <laughs> <laughs> Two's better than one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> um, what a, I'll give you an example of some uh, uh, some some uh, interesting Renaissance va- Vatican porn. Okay. Uh, um, the 16th century, one of Raphael's students was commissioned to paint 16 frescoes in, card- in a guy called uh, Cardinal Bibiena, his private bathroom. So he's got this nice big private bathroom and 16 uh, frescoes, each each uh, showing a different position, in, a different sexual position in graphic detail. So he's effectively got the fucking Kama Sutra on his bog walls. <laughs> At this time, would is, is it would it have been still the same sort of rules as today where the priests aren't allowed to get down and dirty? Yeah, yeah. Well, well the higher, they did though. I mean, it was... Well, so I think they did because the things weren't as strictly controlled. I mean, if I weren't allowed to do it, do you think I'd want to look at fucking porn? He's a cardinal, so he can probably trot across the Pope's secret tunnel and go and visit his oh, mistress. Well. Who's in the, uh... <laughs> but what I'm saying is, if why tease yourself is what I'm saying. If you're not going to do it, if you're generally sticking to the rules, but he's a wanker, can he? I suppose. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know the rules. I presume he can. I have no idea. I don't know any priests. Neither, neither, no, thank fuck. <laughs> Number nine, then, mm-hmm. uh, the Assini Gospel of Peace. What's that, then? Huh? Well, apparently on a locked shelf in 1929, the, um, an academic, who was also a bishop, found an ancient Aramaic manuscript. This, he claimed, contained the teaching of the Essenes, a m- Jewish mystical sect who lived entirely apart from society. They were mentioned by several ancient historians, uh, including Plino, uh, Philo, Pliny and Josephus. Mm-hmm. heard of Pliny. Pliny, I think, is Pliny. Um, but they were known for their communistic style of living. They were a total absence from the New Testament. Communists? Communists. Uh-huh. And the theory is that Jesus was one of them, and that's why he had this importance of ba- baptism, prophecy, share, and a shared emphasis on charity and goodwill. Oh, Jesus was a communist. He was a Marxist. Most definitely. He was a show-off. <laughs> <laughs> He was, wasn't he? He was a bit, yeah. Oh, you've got two fishes and five loaves, have you? Watch uh, this. Does his Mr. Miyagi clap yeah. over him? The cunt could walk like... on water! Of course he's a show up. <laughs> yeah, he's literally God-made man. <laughs> I'd be showing off, wouldn't you? <laughs> Just say it. If, if, allegedly. <laughs> Give me sugar, baby. <laughs> Hail to the king. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Fucking heart from Jesus. <laughs> Knocking people out in bars yeah. and stealing their girlfriend. How awesome would it be? <laughs> That's a Jesus I can get yeah. from. He's even, got a, he's even got time to flick a coin to a beggar. You know what I mean? It's all a charity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's got, I don't think he's got a cut off denim jacket on. Oh, well, they still killed that cut <laughs> He's doing double denim, isn't he? He's doing double denim. Double denim. He's doing double denim. He's not living in Dudley in the 1970s, Ben. He's not a roadie for Slade. Look, this is my Jesus. For the quo, with his thumbs in his belt. I was thinking more biker look Jesus rather than pussy rock Jesus. It was all the rage in the 70s. Oh, man. <coughs> well, either way, I think that Jesus is far better than the one people in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Jesus, yeah. there's apparently in there details of his bloodline. Mm. You know, the Da Vinci Code. 
I did hear that. Um, Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, which was the map which really inspired the Da Vinci Code. I read that. My God, it was a fucking long read. I can proudly say never read them or watched them. Woo! The book's better than the film. I've seen the film, that. not read the book. Yeah, the book's better than the film. Same with Angels and Demons, so the I book's a lot better than the film. Is the idea to be that if you know his bloodline, you could, in theory, trace his descendants on Earth today? Yeah. If he um, has any, unless it died, his bloodline ran out, died out. Well, that's, that's a possibility. Well, if he even existed in the first place. Well, yeah. oh my <laughs> God! <laughs> Whoa! Hello! <laughs> I'm just trying to be scholarly. I'm going to say allegedly. <laughs> ah, fuck him. He was a fucking made-up... He was. He's he's a, many an amalgamation of loads of other yeah. fucking yeah. even older religions. The lazy fucking cunts couldn't even bother to invent one from scratch. They just used all the old classics. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. He well, might have been a real dude. I've, I, I'm not the only yeah. person who thinks this. He may have been a real bloke who got appointed as the son of God. Like, a lot of people gathered together, he was. And, or gathered together 12 blokes who thought he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think he was just a dude. I think he went to, get, went to India, yeah. met the Buddha. Found himself. Found himself. Took a lot of drugs. Yeah. <gasps> DMT, That's did all it, that yeah. shit. And then he came back to That's yeah, it. and enlightened and everyone. People think, my God, look at him. He's... he's He's like a hippie yeah. fucking love god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could that be a solo warden yeah. song? Hippie love god. <laughs> Jesus the hippie love yeah. god. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come to me, my children. <laughs> <laughs> show you the ways of love. <laughs> this is what we call love. <laughs> oh, man. See, now this, this is a vibe I can get behind. It's a duet. What are you doing to me, Jesus? <laughs> This is what we call love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm doing lines off your back while I'm stuffing your crack. It's love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hippie love god. <laughs> Tried itself. Oh, oh, man. Amazing. He'd just be like Russell Brand, wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> just fucking, yeah. just buffing everything in his <laughs> In this, in the film, time. in the film of this, we need to get Russell Brand. Yeah. To be fair. He's yeah. just gonna be buffing everybody. Does he be a drugged up hippie Jesus? Yeah. They'd all think, oh, he's so deep. When really, he's not saying much, like there's much smarter people than Jesus off at the side. Like, what the. F it's fucking... Noam Chomsky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is like pop psychology bullshit. Look at him all fucking line up like circus hails. because he's handsome and he's been to India. Fucking hell. I've been in the library for 40 years. You smoke a reefer, Noam, do you know? <laughs> hey, Noam, baby, it's me. Jeez, have a time, man. Maybe let me touch you a little bit. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Look at that. You'll like it. <laughs> Yeah. We may not get that one past the census. Well, you know, wasn't he a bit Roman, Jesus? No? <laughs> he was a, <laughs> he was a Palestinian right Jew, apparently. Allegedly. Well, Allegedly. Well, I read a post on that conspiracy thing, remember, the other day, that big, long, insane rant. Oh, some of the conspiracy groups were in on Facebook. Oh, They're God. Priceless. The one's been taken over by this one guy who just keeps, mm. keeps posting stuff continually with the same subject, and he's the only guy replying to his own post. Yeah, oh, my with God. With millions that, is, that he's made. That yeah. is madness. That's a sign of madness. Some of the shit people read, because, you know, we try and have a laugh with this stuff, don't we, as yeah. much as we can. But, man, the, some of the things, these truthers are a little bit... They sort of scare me a little bit, some of them. It's, man, I, I don't think it's fun to be them. That, do you know what I mean? I feel bad. It's like, come on, it shouldn't be like this. It should be a bit of fun, yeah, and a bit of opening your mind a bit and being a bit more aware about politics than knowing that the mainstream media is, obviously. Not going to tell you the full story, but when you start going into the... The deeper levels, and you see it's some like of a rabbit posts. hole in it. Yeah, you go down it, and it just goes on forever and ever. It gets more and more. But the thing is, it's like they don't trust anybody that doesn't have a YouTube channel. <laughs> and it's like if it's on YouTube and it's some bloke in his basement mm. shouting into a, a camera, yeah. they believe that. Mm -hmm. But they won't believe someone who spent like 15, 20 years studying a subject. What do you know, science boy? But if some yeah. uneducated bloke in a basement is shouting it into a camera, they're, they're down with that, and I don't understand why. Well, that's the trouble with social media now, isn't it? It's on about the, they're going about the bubble. The echo chamber. The echo chamber. And, and because you like more and more the same thing, you're only going to get that narrow perspective. Mm -hmm. it's, the same, it's exactly the same as someone who's a Tory, for example. They're only getting the, the narrative the Tory, from, from the, the Telegraph and Newsnight. Do you know what I mean? They're yeah. going to get a totally different view of the world from us. Yeah. It's all about perception. The perception deception, to quote St. Yeah. Oh. 
But anyway, go back to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> now, nothing is known about Christ's life between childhood and his 30s, so why couldn't he have fathered children? Well, there's no reason why not, is That there? raises questions of lineage. Oh. The specific details of the bloodline are locked away in the archives, but if anyone was the direct descent of Jesus, and therefore God, well, the popes and the church, they're redundant, aren't they? Well, they're not his representative on earth, well, no, are they? That's it. The Pope's rendered blood, utterly yeah. useless as the representative. Mm. Oh, so mm. they lose their power. Makes sense. But in theory, if Jesus did actually have children, I should point this out, mm -hmm. um, we'd all be descended from him just because it's like sort of 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 generations yeah. ago. It's like we're all related to Charlemagne, aren't we? Yeah, we're all related to Genghis Khan. Just, it's just, there's only so many genes about. Things anyone sort of past the sort of thirteen hundreds and we're mm. and we're because of the maths the way it works. Yeah, I'm not going to claim to understand that, but I'm just I always knew I was related to him. <laughs> <laughs> you Charlemagne? No, fucking Jesus! I could feel it. <laughs> that explains the new long hair. Yeah, <laughs> it just happened overnight. It was a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Can you turn water into lager? <laughs> I can turn lager into piss. <laughs> you can do that. I can do that. <laughs> no, no, okay. it's not very Maybe we're all, well, we're all related to him. We're all related to him. There you go. Boom. Some more than others. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, in the allegedly stored in there, the Grand Grimoire. What the hell is that? It's known to exist, but the author is unknown. May have been discovered in the tomb of King Solomon in 1750. Supposedly, it contains a ritual for summoning Lucifuge Refoucal, the Prime Minister of Hell, along with other denizens. <laughs> the Prime Minister world. of Hell! Yeah, Satan's number two, isn't it? Oh, that's so metal! <laughs> <laughs> um, apparently, oh. the summoner has to give up their soul in the process. Oh, fuck! Oh. I am the Prime Minister of Hell! Yeah! Lucifuge! Oh, fuck, that's like one step down from the devil himself, I guess, so you're mm. his right hand man. Yep. You look after all the day-to-day -day hell That's stuff. Yeah. He's off on missions up on Earth. Mm. Prime Minister of Hell. You're making decisions like, do we buy more whips or more chains <laughs> this year? What's our whip supply looking like? Yeah. How many are we going through a week? <laughs> oh, do we need more pokey sticks? <laughs> that yeah, shit that. be delegated, though, surely. Well, he's, he's got to sign it off, though, hasn't he? He's got to sign it off, yeah. Yeah, he still sat behind his desk. And if, know, he's storing, if, if he's storing his job, Mike, he's checking everything. Mm. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Shrinkage is a problem, even now. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want economic shrinkage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, it's a uh, necromatic procedure that a 19th century occultist called A.E. Waite said that only a dangerous maniac or an irreclaimable criminal will be qualified to carry out to the full. There you go, Gaz. <laughs> 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 Cheers. I'll give it a go. <laughs> Gaz will do it. Summon the Prime Minister of Hell. <laughs> yeah. Who well, voted you in, you cunts? <laughs> I didn't vote for you. <laughs> Not in my name. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a Prime Minister, I guess there's a process, and then maybe you can... Uh, you know, get your complaints heard in hell and... Yeah. <laughs> nah. I've been very unhappy with my torture this week. <laughs> yes. It's not <laughs> ironic enough. <laughs> I've just been getting stabbed a lot. <laughs> I died of high cholesterol, I was bound to be fed steak. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's going to suck. Very well, so we'll refer you, refer you back to our ironic torture departments. <laughs> ironic torture. No, there's an idea. I love that bit from The Simpsons where Homer spends a day in hell mm -hmm. and he gets the ironic torture and he's like, oh, you like donuts? Here's all the donuts in the world! Yeah. And he just keeps eating them all. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's like the demon's just like, I don't understand! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Homer's like four times the size and just keeps eating the donuts. He's more. He does love her donuts. He does. He certainly does. Oh. Uh, let's just call a quick, quick break. Yeah, man. Yep. And we're back, so uh, let's continue. Number six, the third secret of Fatima. Yes. You know yeah. Remember this? In 1917, three shepherd children in Fatima, Portugal, received three prophetic visions from the Virgin Mary herself. 
Ooh. The first and second concern the nature of hell and the rise of communist Russia, wars, famine, and the spread of Russia's errors around the world. Wow. The first two secrets were published in 1941, but the third wasn't. It was sealed in an envelope given to the Bishop of Liera, who placed it unopened in the archives. In 1959, it was brought before Pope John XXIII, and he chose not to look inside. Mm. Smart move. It wasn't until 1965 that anyone read it, and even then, Pope Paul VI refused to make it public. John Paul II was the next to read it. That was after his assassination attempt in 1981. It's like Doc Brown says, though, you shouldn't know too much about your future. You know what I mean? That's I wouldn't want to read it. Well, especially if it's meant to be quite bad. That's true. You wouldn't want to read it. If, no? some, if someone came in here and I said, right, we've got the third Fatima secret. I, I fucking ascribe to the school of Doc Brown. <laughs> I want to read it. No, dangerous to know too much about your future. Well, I don't believe in prophecies, so it's all right. It's your kids, Marty! <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he didn't make it public, Pope John mm. Paul II. All right. I think everyone's favourite Pope, mm -hmm. if there is such a thing. Uh, I, I, uh, most people's favourite. Okay, I don't have a favourite, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I not, I'm not very up on my I haven't, I haven't got a favourite one, I just most people just like him. Okay, he's a nice guy. He was the one that was there forever. Like, if I was to think of the Pope, it's the Pope. Like, when I was a kid, it was that Pope. Mm. And then he was the Pope, you know, when we were at school. Yeah, that Pope. Yeah. He's the Pope, isn't he? Yeah. It's been a few him. since him, hasn't he? But I don't really... I don't know what he looks like now. I can't picture the Pope in my oh, head. Oh, man. Right well, he didn't make it public, but he did immediately consecrate the earth to the Immaculate Heart of the Virgin Mary. So something worried him. Jeez. And um, finally, in, in the year 2000, Pope John Paul II revealed that it was basically about an apocalyptic battle between good and evil with the Pope at the centre of it. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, fucking arrogant bastard. Oh, so what, he's fighting him off like Rambo, is he? <laughs> <laughs> fucking crosses in each hand, firing out holy nails. That would be sweet. That's a good movie. Holy nail gun. <laughs> 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 but, um... You know Pope Benedict XVI, who succeeded him, he was the Nazi Pope, former Nazi Pope. Ah, uh, yeah, Ratzenberg. Ratzenberg, yeah. Now, he implied the real secret had yet to be revealed, and that was in 2010. Mm, yeah. Apparently, yeah, I've, I've heard that. Ratzenbergers. Where do old popes go? These die. Okay. He's, the, he's the first one mm. in, in years to, to, to voluntarily step down. Oh yeah, I do remember that being news now. Actually, now that you say it, yeah, they usually just die and then another one sworn yeah. in. Yeah, but they don't usually last that long because they all get to get sworn in. The, the John John Paul II was quite young when he was sworn in. I think he was what, mm. in his fifties, maybe his sixties. Yeah. That was considered quite young. Usually they're in the eighties. Mm. Yes. And apparently, being uh, elected pope is they refer to it jokingly as being the quickest way to heaven because uh. they don't need to last long in the job. They, believe it or not, they actually mm. do twelve-hour days. It's probably quite. They're running fun. a city. Yeah. They're also head of the. They've got to do. They've got to go, go in places. They're doing different things. They're running mm. a city. He is the absolute yeah. monarch. Mm. He's the top monarch. Mm. He's the dog's monarch. <laughs> Sorry. That's two in a night. The dog's monarch. <laughs> Sorry. <I> st <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you might have moaned at me for burp. <laughs> It's all the fucking, like, flu drugs, cold and flu, <laughs> bloody tablets. Oh, no, I cured my cold with Southern Comfort, <laughs> marijuana and paracetamol. It was amazing. No. Believe me, in the right combination, that shit gets rid of your cold. <laughs> uh, number five, E.T. Artifacts. E.T.? Extraterrestrial. Not the little cut oh, yeah. thing from the film. <laughs> Today, Sad that that's where my mind went. The Vatican <laughs> is, is kind of progressive <laughs> in terms of it was in the Vatican or something. I thought of the film <laughs> ET as soon as you said ET. I didn't just think extraterrestrial in general, like I should, like a true pop culture fucking cocksucker, <laughs> something at the teat of pop culture and not like actual history or anything. You say ET, and I think that little fucking idiot. But anyway, I digress. I'm just saying that's where no. my brain went, and I'm disappointed. You should be. I sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Extraterrestrials, that's... I, I can see the look of disappointment on Mike's face. <sighs> okay. It looks sad. Please continue. <laughs> 
Now today the Vatican is uh, kind of progressive in terms of um, science and technology to a point. The fact that they have got that massive telescope and actively look for... <laughs> I was going to say progressive, I mean... No, no, it's hard in terms of science and technology they, they do tend to jump on board nowadays. Unless mm. it, I mean they even try and sort of say well the Big Bang was like God, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, Pope Francis has come out recently as Ian said that there are probably aliens or something. Yeah, in, a, in terms of a, looking for alien life they're quite active. They even had a conference to discuss the possibility of extraterrestrial life. I mean, oh, there, there are Vatican scientists. Don't they own three of the world's most powerful telescopes? They certainly own one of them. Um, but apparently, allegedly, the church has known about alien civilization for centuries. Oh. And they've got the uh, stuff from long before the Roswell incident. They're said to have been gathering extraterrestrial remains and artifacts as well as technical documents for engineering alien weapons. Mm -hmm. So which leads me to believe, right, there's like a Vatican MIB, <laughs> and some priests, <laughs> and all you know, got the white collar on, yeah, and, they're they're all in and they go and flashing people's brains to make them forget mm -hmm. alien sightings, a Vatican men in black. Do you think aliens try to assassinate the Pope? Maybe. Yes, have alien bodyguards? Maybe. The fact that... Like the Predator, but like in a cloaking suit or something. Oh, so like you've got the Swiss Guard, yeah. and then you've got Predators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're looking for our Anunnaki overlords. Because mm -hmm. they know the actual truth of the fact that we were seeded, you know, to be, just do dig gold, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's, that's what they're looking for. Come back, take us back up. We are your lizard... We built a big fucking building shaped like a snake's head, for fuck fuck's mm. sake. Yet to come. Mm. Come and take us. We're one of you. Number four. <laughs> You're like number four. Okay. It's the chronovisor. Ooh. The chronovisor. Father Pellegrino Anetti, who died in 1992, claimed to have seen the most ancient Roman senator, Cicero, deliver a speech in 63 BC using the chronovisor. Wow. He and his team also claimed to have seen Napoleon giving speeches and Jesus at the Last Supper and Crucifixion. They could view any event they wished. Mm -hmm. So what is the chronovisor and how does it work? Gaz. Well, I don't know what the machine is. It's just, uh, uh, basically, Tell us about the machine first. Well, basically, it's this, a visor that goes mm -hmm. over your head and you look mm -hmm. through it. Okay. So I don't like, know how it works. No one knows how this thing works. Like time travelling goggles. <laughs> yeah, effectively. You're lucky. You can't interfere with anything, but you can go back and view it. You can view it. You can have a look and wang. Like, <laughs> <if you want laughs> so one of them old um, Victorian machines where you put the money in, put, go, put your eyes to the machine and turn That's the handle. That's exactly what it is. You know, and all the... Except it's the future, or the, it's, just the, it's just the past. Well, um, But I can tell you that it was designed by... Top scientists like Enrico Fermi, who was who developed the first nuclear reactor, and Werner von Braun. Mm. Wow. Well, and it could record images from the past and the future. Just the past. Yeah, you can't look in the future. Apparently, I don't know why. But apparently, there is something called hyperspace remote sensing which is a scanning future and present hypersurfaces by a modified quantum entanglement DCQE device. There you have it. Oh, that, yeah. That, one of them. What, I, what I'm looking at here is a diagram of, you can imagine two cones. One's facing up. Yeah. You know, as we can see here. Oh, so it's like an hourglass. Yeah, one's, yeah, like imagine an hourglass shape and in between the two is a flat, a flat plane. That flat bit, is the hypersurface of the present galaxy. So that's right. our galaxy stretched across the middle there, and uh, we're in the middle here, okay, right where the two cones are dissect. Uh, d d what's it called when they're intersecting? Yeah. <clears throat> Science with gas. The one at the bottom is the past, the past light cone. Yeah. The one going up above us is the uh, future. So I guess the theory is a distant galaxy's past image as it appears optically observable when it enters the light cone propagating from millions of light years away. So it's on another plane of reality. The, it's still existing back there somewhere mm. and through whatever this quantum device is we can then view we can't go there and have a wonder about mm. but we can view it What's your source for this? 
the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is by a guy called. No, it was. This is a whole. This is theoretical site. Like, there's all these papers and shit that mm. I'm not going to print off. Like, actual papers. <clears throat> People yeah. a lot smarter than us think this is theoretically mm. a thing. Yeah. But we haven't got the equipment to do it. Because you know, like you told me about quantum computers and all that sort yeah. of thing. You know. So quantum entanglement, yeah. The way this, uh, what confuses me about this diagram is it's saying that space goes out that way and time, so space goes horizontally and time goes vertically. Right? How do you know that? I'm looking at it and thinking it's like the Tron universe and that's helping me. Mm. Yeah. Even with my B in physics, I'm struggling with this one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be honest. So well, let's just say, right? This quantum basically, machine, they look in it. Yeah, we've got. Choose their point and it's still. The light from the past, what happened, the things like, like what my movements, everything I just did, is going to exist for tr forever, isn't it? Echoing. So for all we know, they're looking at us podcasting in the future. Well, they'd probably choose something a bit more Oh, yeah, they could be. <laughs> well, they're watching the crucifixion of Christ. <laughs> well, if they're, if they're a a egotistical and arrogant, then they might look for anyone having a conversation about their precious machine. Where did they get this tech from? Aliens or... Just well, what? Apparently designed by top scientists of the day, Von Braun and uh, Fermi, who are n and other top si top men. So we're, we're the two talking about mentioned. the fifties and sixties. Yeah, well, earlier than that because apparently they um, Pope Pius XII and Mussolini didn't like it. They said it was a threat to society, an end to all secrets, political, economic, military, and personal. And so yes. they said, "Well, don't Mussolini you actually quoted on this." No, none of this is quoted, Mike. <laughs> what was I going to say? None of this is quoted, but that does throw the timeline out for me because that's like too early for me. Mussolini's having a say on it, so the Vatican have had it longer. Or Mussolini right. didn't die. What bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> Mike, it's the chronovisor. Didn't they hang Mussolini? Yeah, from a petrol station yeah. sign. I think they shot him first. <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah, I think so. And then hung the bodies up as like gruesome trophies. Mm. I think it was him and his mistress from a petrol station. So all dictators go, Mike. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> um, or sodomised by a knife. Yeah. It's always gruesome. It's it's never good, is it? Still, you get a good few years of trotting around that swanky uniform, <laughs> <have> you? <laughs> enriching yourself to the mm. note, having a good time, living the high life. <laughs> Rise for the fall. Isn't it? The lesson to be learned, we've got to piss off the West, just do what they say for a while, keep enriching yourself. Maybe that's what they're building, maybe that's what the CERN thing is, you know. Oh, the um, Hadron Collider? Yeah, that's it, maybe that's, uh, you know, they're trying to generate the energy to uh, build another chronovisor. Ooh. Oh, there's an actual diagram here, but like, the fucking... Yeah, but if they made a chronovisor pre-1945, you know, we would have been powered on something like a pocket calculator. Why would they need to build a hadron collider? Yeah, because we're trying to look further back than even they had. The uh, fucking, they, maybe multi dimensions. Uh, well, see, I bet they were so self upset they just went back a few years and they see what was that cunt doing back then when this yeah, happened? Because well, they can view anything. Well, you think it uh, happened yesterday? Yeah. Maybe with but more no. power, you can get a chrono suit. No, I think this is purely visual. Way. It's I don't purely think we visual can go and back. I'm on about the Hadron Collider. If enough, oh. enough energy, maybe you can go back. Maybe that's yeah. the next step. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, that would make sense. Maybe it's a person in that tube getting shot. Well, none of this makes sense, but. <laughs> none of this makes full sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all bollocks, probably, but. It's fun, though, isn't it? Chrono Visor! <laughs> 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 this is one of my favourite uh, you know, things we've ever talked about, the chronovisor. I'm down for a chronovisor. Yeah, I'm, I don't know what I'd look at, to be fair. Well, the thing is, you can look at any, anything that happened like a few Dinosaurs. hours ago. Dinosaurs, did we talk about yeah, this? Yeah, we did. I'd look, well, we said where we'd go in a protective bubble. But I, yeah, I'd observe dinosaurs for I'd sure. I'd observe dinosaurs. Yeah. And the giant ice age creatures, like giant sloths, imagine that. Yeah. Mm. Where did you want to go? Rourke's Drift? At Waterloo. Oh, yeah, Waterloo. And the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've never thought of Rogue's Drift before. <laughs> Waterloo! Waterloo! Oh, no. Though I've probably got a Rogue's Drift to be fair, that'd be a bit of So, excuse my fucking cough. Yeah, should we carry on? Yeah, uh, number three. 
the devil himself. <laughs> Vatican's most the most senior. Keep exorcist. him in a library. No, no, he's just in the Vatican. Oh. Well, that uh, makes sense. He's the yeah. fuck, probably in the form of the Pope. Like an unwanted lodger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the most senior exorcist. Always leave his pants everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving his plates to be washed up. Empty yeah. <laughs> <laughs> beer cans strewn across the paper palace. <laughs> Cigarette burns in the couches. No, oh, you don't want that. <laughs> Everything's really old in there. You never get repaired. <laughs> um, the Vatican's most senior say, exorcist. You, I went for six bit six thousand years old, is it? <coughs> so you got a place of your own, mate. <laughs> 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 six thousand years old, did he say that? He's way older than that. Is this God side the universe? Yeah, didn't God create the world six thousand years ago? Six well, you got Oh yeah, there. technically, yeah, yeah, in terms of we're going full on Yeah. Yeah? If we're going full Alex, then yeah, definitely. Full Catholic. <laughs> if we're going full Alex, then... No, I don't think that Catholics do go for the whole six days. Well, that's just a particular brand of evan- evangelicals. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. I think the Catholic, the Catholic Church acknowledges the Big Bang. So, oh, right, okay. Okay, so he's, he's very old then. He's at least 13.7 billion years old. Get a place of your own. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you that the Vatican's most senior exorcist, uh, which is Gabriel Amorth, knew how to recognise a demon. Before his death in 2016, he conducted literally tens of thousands of exorcisms and had frequently spoken to the devil himself. He said that Satan is pure spirit. Um, He told that to the uh, the director of the Exorcist film. He was Mm -hmm. an advisor on that. Although he sometimes appears as a raging animal. In 2010, he claimed that Satan was hiding in the Vatican. In his view, scandals and corruption that beset the church in recent times are all attributed to the devil. Mm-hmm. Even Pope Paul VI said in 1972, quote, From somewhere or other, the smoke of Satan has entered the house of God. Mm, smoke of Satan. <laughs> yeah! Entering the house of God. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Suck on the smoke of Satan. I'd smoke a weed called the smoke of Satan. Yeah, that's all right, yeah. actually. Yeah. In my personal oh, my choice. Weed. That's what they call marijuana, isn't it? The devil's weed. Oh, oh man. Only those silly people. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I smoked a lot of it this week. I'm high. <laughs> Helps us, didn't we, the flu, I find? Yeah, I well, couldn't for a few. I was way too fucking. I didn't get out of bed. I barely smoked any cigarettes. I mean, anyway, what um, a day when I was at that point. I'm, but, yeah, I'm over it now. Ish. Apart from this chesty cough, but it makes my voice sound all nice for podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> Allegedly. Better, better than usual. <laughs> so, uh, number two, proof that Jesus wasn't crucified. Well, mm-hmm. why would they keep that down there? Well, his crucifixion lies at the heart of Catholic dogma. Take it away, and all you've got is a whole bunch of symbols, rituals, and chants, isn't it? I've always thought well, it odd why you would want to wear any sort of jewellery with a crucifix of Christ on it. Yeah, it's like a dude being tortured. Yeah, it's kind of gruesome. It is a bit. I think I mentioned it before as well, the symbol of eating his, eating his body and drinking his blood. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's cannibalism. It's all a bit it's weird, magic. Isn't it, Mike? The whole thing. I'm not into any of it, really. I like the whole. You know, I do like a bit of spirituality, and churches are nice. Some of them, the old ones, as buildings. Mm. But yeah, I don't want to go in there and fucking take part in all the silliness. <laughs> no, it's a bit too up there for me. Jesus allegedly lived long after his supposed death in uh, 33 AD. After making a deal with Pontius Pilate, because Rome liked the Christians to a point where because Jesus told his followers to pay their taxes. <laughs> it was well, part of the tenets. Of, so it was a maybe a, he was, Jesus was just a, an infiltrating fucking mole just to put him in there, mm. get him to pay the taxes. Well, maybe. Yeah, so the Christians Soil. basically the, the biggest uh, ta- yeah. they were the taxpayers that Jesus said to pay your tax. Maybe it's because they think if you just pay your taxes, be a good citizen, they'll leave you alone. Mm. Might be the thing... But yes, yeah, so it was in Rome's interest, despite the pressure. So basically, what they did was they uh, stuck him up there. They sort of nailed him up there, mind. Yeah. Obviously. But then, you know that little rag there they sort of put up the bit. <laughs> to fix it's a rag on a drink. stick. What? You wash it. You wash it. <laughs> no, to, to do him a drink. Oh, why? You put this, this rag on a stick. 
predators. So if they're thirsty, <laughs> then you glass for water, and they will get a rag on a stick or a bit of sponge on a stick. <laughs> Imagine being up there, fucking nailed up, right, in agony, and then you just see at the bottom of your vision just. <laughs> Is that Dirty fucking rubbish? bread? Yeah. What the fuck do I go? Bread. Yeah, that's water. Water. <laughs> Give me a fucking whiskey, you cunt. Well. That's where this comes in with Jesus, is they think of that, that um, sponge on a stick <laughs> used to, to quench their thirst was actually brought on, it was dipped in uh, hashish, opium and something called belladonna. Be- Basically the drugs, they drugged you up so we would right. think that they died early on the cross, <coughs> took him down, put him in the tomb, brought him out after he come down, mm. after, off his high, right, and yeah. bound his wounds, <laughs> lived for long, mm. longer. Bless him. Oh, but that, that's everyone's a winner. Get, that's how you get the Christians old. keep paying the taxes, Jesus gets to live. Hey. It was one big psyop all one along. One big oh, all along. Supposedly, these wow. were documents on earth by a French priest called um, Berenet Saunier of Rennes Le Chateau, his church there. Uh, strangely, the document vanished from his possession and Saunier became immensely rich. Mm. And the Pope yeah. used it to light the fire or something. That's yes. Right. Well, that will make sense, doesn't it? So everyone thinks he rose again. Which is really, a tenant of Catholic faith. But, but really, they did a WWE-style crucifixion. <laughs> it wasn't quite on the up. Yeah. Yeah. I know, it's pretty high when they took him down. <laughs> well, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so high he passed out. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, they didn't, uh, don't they usually die up there? Mm-hmm. They've got him down there, they're like, well, do you a favour, mate, come on. Come on, old Jesus, you fucking hippie. I think all the fucking lines you give me. <laughs> <laughs> off they shuffled him and then, uh, oh, you've explained it all. Looked after him for three days. Wow, Ben. What have you done? Mind is blown. I'm high and you've blown my mind. There you go. <laughs> and wow. the, the last one's a bit darker. Live on air. Okay, you're going to yeah. bring me right back down to yeah. earth now, aren't It's you? proof that Pope Pius XII helped Hitler. Yeah. Secret Nazi supporter, the uh, Vatican <coughs> had a platform of non-involvement during the Holocaust, they never condemned the Nazis. Um, however, the Vatican surprising. is adamant, and the official line says that he always argued against them, that he circulated pamphlets in Germany condemning Nazism from a Christian perspective, and allegedly saved more than 800 Jews from extermination in Eastern Europe. However, uh, he did meet with the German leadership a lot, um, lots of times, probably to discuss collaboration, but... Th- and the official line says we have to hold them to account <laughs> that he loved Jews. No, he was edging his bets. Of course if the Nazis was. fucking win this thing, I want to be on their side, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I can't condemn the cunts. Because they'll have me. Goes. We haven't got a dog in this race yet. Let's see who wins. Well, they're occupying Italy as well, remember? The yeah. Germans are occupying Italy. Yeah. Mm. Mussolini's also a fascist. Mm. You're, under, you're effectively living under German rule, whether you like it or not. So what are you going to do? You're not going to say... Even a man of God. I mean, he's meant to be the most pious person in the world. He's the most influential man in Europe. I know, exactly. You know. And it's just cowardice, isn't it, at the end of the day? Yeah. But there are... They did refuse to release key, release key documents on their Holocaust era activities. Right. They released the official line, but it didn't seem to be everything. And where's the correspondence? Mm. Yeah. You're not going to release a dodgy um, story. And they basically reckon that Pope Pius XII was actually quite a fucking racist anyway, in private, and uh, he agreed with many of the Nazis' ideals. And if you look at the uh, post-war, mm. it is kind of proven that German cardinals and bishops in Rome gave Nazi war criminals Vatican passports to get them out of the country, to get them Argentina. Oh yeah, your father so-and-so now. Boom, off you go. Well, it's not the darkest thing they've done. No, but it's the darkest one on that list. It's still pretty shitty, but uh, yeah, well, that's some, some interesting stuff down there. Nothing beats the Crown. Uh, chronosphere. Chronosphere. Chronovisor. Chronovisor. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, nothing's going to beat that. I mean, that's fucking ace. And the rest of the stuff. Uh, oh, the Jesus one's pretty good. And plus, if he had some descendants, so well, that'll blow it all up. That'll be fucking well, weird. That's why it? they keep it suppressed, don't they? Cause Surely, then somebody mm-hmm. can stand up and go, "I'm Jesus, is great, great." Great, 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 whatever, grandson, um, 
and uh, and I've got more power than uh, than you, Mister. They could go into like parts of like Africa and just like become you know, stop feeding just, people. Just, well, no, just take over the governments and and the armies and and they you could have an into a war of Jesuses. <laughs> What, like, you mean, like, loads of Jesuses turn up at the same time? Uh, loads of people will find out they're descendants of Jesus and they will start warring. Over but we've discussed that's everybody in the world. Yeah. Uh, but wouldn't there be more direct, like, a few, like, direct, direct descendants? As there's four or five and they all get a faction behind them. Right. It's like, well, I'm more Jesus than he is. <laughs> and let's go and kill him and his followers. Isn't it? Am I being really thick? Couldn't it's you? not very Jesus-like, though, is it? No. He did say I come not to bring cool, peace but a sword. It'd be like the X Men of Jesus is. They've all got a bit of his powers. So, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, oh yeah, one actually... can fucking heal people. Mm. Yeah. One can like read your mind. One can one fire can... fucking lasers out of his eyes. One can do a what what happens in the rapture. I don't know. Yeah. One can walk on custard. <laughs> <laughs> not water, but just <laughs> custard. <laughs> Does <laughs> only got like thirteen percent Jesus? How would he ever find out <laughs> that he could do that? Well, if he yeah. happened to ste- accidentally step in a bowl of custard one yeah. day, he was like, "Whoa, man!" <laughs> oh, yeah, man. wow, my foot's just resting on it. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it can't go through the custard. I'm thirteen percent Jesus. I can walk in custard. Oh. Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not following you. <laughs> I'm going for the most powerful Jesus I'm going to hedge my bets like the Pope oh man be like the fucking the Highlander they're going to cut their heads off yeah <laughs> then they get that other percentage of, yeah. hang on 13% divide what, how many is, how many 13s into 100 Um. now you're asking <laughs> That's 6 or 7 is it 6 yeah. or 7 and they've all got percentage the last one alive gets the whole package yeah. so he becomes yeah. Jesus <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> well, the rest of us gonna die though. Can't we just put them in a ring. Uh, there's a comic book in there. Somewhere. <laughs> I think there is. <laughs> We're probably sued by the Highlander people though. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Never mind the church. <laughs> Never mind the Catholic church. <laughs> and the strong anti-Christian, uh, the strong Christian protest to come uh, uh, sort of. Followers <laughs> everywhere. I can't be only one Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did you have a samurai Jesus? Yeah. A biker yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Hobo Jesus. Hobo <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Encompassing the purity, he won't last long. Excuse Butcher me. Jesus. Butcher knives. <laughs> yeah. Gaffer tape to his hands. Yeah. <laughs> Future Jesus. <laughs> oh man, it's all coming together. Oh, anyway, Mike, tell us about this fucking audience hall. I'll let you read it. <laughs> Can I call a piss break then? Yeah, go on. <laughs> so let's talk about the Paul the Sixth audience hall. Also known as the Hall of the Pontifical Audiences. It's a building in Rome named for Pope Paul the Sixth with a seating capacity of 6,300 people. Designed in reinforced concrete by the Italian architect Pier Luigi Nervi and completed in 1971. And it was constructed on land donated by the Knights of Columbus. Ooh. Isn't that fun? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that cool. Yeah, it lies partially in the Vatican City but mostly in Italy. The Italian part of the building is treated as an extraterritorial ter- extra area of the Holy See and is used by the Pope as an alternative to St. Peter's Square when conducting his Wednesday morning general audience. Mm-hmm. So that's the background to that. And these are some photos oh. of, <coughs> of the building. Looks remarkably like the head of a snake. It, it does. does! You know all that stuff on the top looks like scales to me as well. Yeah. Weird though, isn't it? It's strange, and that's not even the best angle. And, I mean, and then from inside... From inside you've literally got scales, two snake eyes and fucking fangs. fangs. Oh dear. I mean... What's that about? Brazen. Really? It's brazen, isn't it? You remember the Bible? Mm. And you know Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Satan is the snake, isn't he? He's disguised himself as the snake. That was my understanding. And he's like, hey, Eve, eat that fruit. No, you know, mm. eat it. Go on, have it. Oh yeah, it tastes good. Doesn't it taste good? All that knowledge. All right. The snake's Satan, isn't he? Yeah. Why is he doing looking like a snake then? In the Vatican throne room. It's to remind you what you're supposed to not be. 
Take me in, no tender woman. I don't know. It <laughs> oh, is. fuck yes, mate. <laughs> Sad the snake. It's, uh, it is, are we having a case of par- paradolia? <laughs> I really don't think so in this instance. I mean, I'm just a bit devil's advocate. I know, I know. I know what right. you're saying, but it's a bit obvious, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, is it the camera angle? You know Murphy's Law, yeah. uh, you know, is it the Occam's Razor? Mm. Is that paradoxical? I mean, if that, thing is, that's, that is like literally dead centre at the back where that photo's taken from. Yeah. It's the central aisle at the back of it. You're looking directly at the Pope from the furthest point you can be in that audience hall. Yep. And it looks like a fucking snake. It looks like a snake. It's two <laughs> oval windows yeah. at the sides that look like eyes. And there's clearly like uh, structures coming down up that look like fangs. Yeah. The ceiling looks like scales. Yeah. The uh, the bit where the eyes are is like a different type of brick, so it looks like it's got a patterned scale. There's a definite snake motif. <laughs> That's what we're trying to say. Ring there's a, a snake motif. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I like it's that. It's a bit snake themed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dodging it. Not maybe they just, they just like snakes. <laughs> Who doesn't like snakes? I really like snakes. I like snakes. I'd have a snake. But, no, I wouldn't have a snake. You know, it's virtually like in the first passages of the, of the holy book, your holy book. Yeah, mm. Genesis. Is everything to you. Mm. Why would you then build a building in honour of a snake that deceived Adam and Eve? Eve. Deceived Eve, yes, good point, yeah. Mm. It was a pretty woman. Because. <laughs> oh, the bird man in the podcast. <laughs> Oh, well done, my gay lady to our female listeners. You want to know what? <laughs> I'm only joking. Why would you build this, the building shaped like a snake's head? Probably because Satan! He's in the Vatican! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's their little nod to him. He's head of the architect's department now. Maybe it's his favourite little bit that he likes to go there on his own when it's empty. Yeah. Well, shall we see what um, sits behind him on that stage? Mm. Oh, yeah. There's a big statue behind the Pope's little golden throne and where his trusted dudes sit. It's called The Resurrection, and it's by Fazzini. It's an 800 quintal, which is an 80 metric ton, bronze copper alloy sculpture by Perichi Ferenzi in the Porzi Thornton's Hall by the Snakehead Building, intended to capture the anguish of 20th century mankind living under the threat of nuclear war. La Resurrection depicts Jesus rising from a nuclear crater in the garden of Gethsemane. Now, it could be that, <laughs> but if you don't look close up, right, <coughs> when, when you, there's, there's angles like this, and it depends what angle you're looking at and how close you are, mm-hmm. but you can see right, that it's Jesus, mm-hmm. and his, his hair is being windswept to the side. There we go. Yeah. Right? You can see a face, it is yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck are them behind him? Um, they look like winged demony things. Well, they're meant to be people, I assume, in a nuclear blast, a nuclear holocaust. But, when you look at it from any other angle apart from that exact one, mm. that's a fucking lizard, that is, mate. Yeah. Uh, all day, every day, with wings. It looks even more so when you when you zoom out. Yeah. It's an amazing sculpture, but it's it's horrifying. And it's not what I would expect him to have behind his <laughs> Do you know what? I've got to what be we honest. should do is each go to our parents. Yeah. Say, have you seen what the, the, the Pope <laughs> sits behind, sits in front yeah. of? What do you think that is? Yeah, and just see what their reaction is because our mother's is probably mm. the, the person I think furthest away from this sort of thing, yeah. conspiracies and that. Yeah. So, an like, interesting little test. Yeah. Why did he choose that? Which Pope was it that chose to have that in the. In it was the in the 1970s, movie? so it would have been um, either. John Paul 1 or John Paul 2, probably. In fact, the listeners can play in this game. We want their mm. re- responses from the most sort of yeah. conservative family member. What yes. do they think this looks like? Yeah. Have a look at the... Um, and do you think it's normal? <laughs> have a look, yeah, so listeners, look, let's play a game together. We'll all go and ask our mums what <laughs> they think this statue behind the Pope's throne is. And you ask yours. Have a look at it yourselves. So what you think what the hell it is. And then you can tell us. It looks like a lizard. It's a lizard. 
It's a lizard with some fucking demony shit going on around him. <laughs> to be yeah, fair, a good sculpture though. Imagine someone made that by hand, yeah. I guess. But apparently yeah, he yeah. burst a blood vessel doing it, didn't he? Well, I'm not something something fell on him, I think, and he burst a blood vessel. Well, I think he's there. Right. Oh, I was gonna say maybe he was killed by so he'd never create anything more satan-y. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, it just looks weird. Mm. A blood clot. The burning plastic gave him a blood clot during his production. Oh, wow. For fuck's sake. The original work was done in polystyrene and the fumes. Oh, yeah. Polystyrene. So, 77, I'm guessing that's. Uh, if it was finished in 77, then I'm uh, guessing that's John Paul II. The commission for the work was ordered by Count Gall Gallisi in 1965. Casting began at the. Michalucci Art Foundry in Pistoia in 1972. The final sketch was produced in 75. 77's of the year of the Sex Pistols, that thing was installed into... Yeah. Star Wars? Yeah, the year of Star Wars, that thing is installed behind the Pope. And every day since... It, so who goes to and see the year, and, and the year of Rillian. Real? So who goes to see yeah, when he's talking in there? Um, all his best buddies. It's the general general audience. It's like yeah. everyone who's important. So uh, by invitation, then I guess. So and they've had to sit there all these years in front of that thing, thinking, "Do you think this is a bit strange? That that's like of all the Jesus statues they could have had. Yeah, they couldn't have had a nice one with him. You know, them nice pictures of him with a sheep. Yeah, <laughs> feeding yeah. a lamb. Yeah." yeah. Patting a child's yeah. head, kind of thing. No. no, we want to remind you of the misery! The absolute... Well, maybe they know something we don't, that's what we are fucking going to die in the atomic yeah. fucking fires. Well, I've got an article about that. Oh! <laughs> hey! I think. This is an, an Irish saint's eerie prophecy that Pope Francis will be the last pontiff. I've heard about this before now. The prophecies of the Irish saint, St. Malachi, the 12th century Bishop of Armagh, have thrilled and dismayed readers for centuries. He has stated there will only be one more Pope after Benedict, and during his reign comes the end of the world. Dun, dun, dun. The prediction in full is, in the final persecution of the Holy Roman Church, there will reign Peter the Roman, who will feed his flock amid many tribulations, after which the seven hold city will be destroyed. And the dreadful judge will judge the people. The end. So where the fuck does he know? Mm, the Chrono Visor. Ah, that makes sense. Well, well, that was a long time ago. We're talking yeah, he's writing in the 12th century. Yeah. Ah, well, they went back with the Chrono Visor. Yeah, but this is him writing. Oh, yeah. So the father of the current Pope was Peter and was from Italy. Oh, that's a tenuous link at best. But then again, he has, I seem to recall, I think it was like a History Channel documentary, so how accurate he was. He basically written out the name of every Pope. Oh, right. And it got to Francis, and that's like, there the list ends, kind of thing. Well, well, well time will tell. Time will only tell, won't it? Yeah. Um, in 1139, then Archbishop Malachi went to Rome from Ireland to give an account of his affairs. While there, he received a strange vision about the future that included the name of every Pope, 112 in all from his time, who would rule until the end of time. And we are now with the last prophecy. Boom. Well, it says his predictions are taken very, very seriously, but... I mean, I'm not taking them very seriously, no. I don't care. <laughs> in 1958, before the conclave that would elect Pope John XXIII, Cardinal Spellman of New York hired a boat, filled it with sheep, <laughs> and sailed up and down the Tiber River to show that he was Pastor et Norte, the motto attributed to the next Pope in the prophecies. Did he get the job? <laughs> That's a hell of a yeah. fucking job interview, isn't it? Hey, you gotta make me Pope. I filled a boat with sheep and sailed up and down the river. <laughs> It's a prophecy, man. Um, as for the prophecy concerning the 111th Pope, Pope Benedict, the prophecy says of him, Gloria Olive, which means the glory of the olive. The Order of St. Benedict is also known as the Olivitans, Ooh. which many claims make Mal Malachi's prophecies correct. The next and final Pope then should be Peter Romanus. 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 <laughs> Romanus. <laughs> Show it up, your remainers. 
So Malachi gave an account of his vision to Pope Innocent II, but the document re remained unknown in the Roman archive until its discovery in 1590. Many of the prophecies are spot on. For example, the one about Urban uh, Eight is that? Yeah, the eight. Is the uh, Lilium et Rosa, the Lily and the Rose. He was a native of Florence, and on the arms of Florence, figure of Fleur de Lis, Pope John Paul II is de labor solis meaning, uh, meaning of the eclipse of the sun. Carol, uh, do we need to know all this stuff? Oh shit. Well, just, John Paul II was born on the 8th of May uh, in, during a solar eclipse. Yeah, it's just backing up the evidence. Um, right, okay. Peregrinus, Peregrinus, Apostoclipus. <laughs> <laughs> Pilgrim Pope, <laughs> which designates Pius VI, appears to be verified by his many journeys to new lands. So will Pope Francis be the last Pope? The Irish seer of the 12th century has said it will be so. Time will tell. Well, who knows? How long, how old is he? 70 something? He might last another 10 years. Yeah, I mean. According to conspiracy groups, we'll be dead in 10 years with the Fukushima Radio League. Oh, for fuck's <laughs> But doesn't the prophecy, some prophecy, go on about um, Jerusalem being sort of the capital? Only in that book of Revelation oh, thing, and, and I'm not sure quite how true that is, because they, the guys who did, um, oh fucking hell, what's it called? The one where everyone goes to heaven, all the faithful go to heaven. The rapture mm. kind of just bastardised completely the book of Revelations and threw it in, so it's hard to tell you where the fucking... Uh, the, bo the ancient bollocks ends and the fucking new bollocks starts, to be fair. Well, I'm sure we'll find out soon if it's the end of the world or not. Yeah, what else we got? One more. Co conspiracies and Catholicism. Lucifer and the Vatican. Mm. Did you know the Vatican is working with Lucifer? Well, they'd be a lot cooler if they did. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. People also say they're looking for aliens. Actually, they're working right next door to each other, doing their own things, and sometimes collaborate. And I'm not saying Lucifer in all capital letters, because they're yelling that Lucifer's in capital letters of the article, uh, because it's more properly L-U-C-I-F-E-R, the large binocular telescope near infrared utility with camera and integral field unit for extragalactic research. And someone can tell me where the fuck wow. Lucifer fits into that, I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> it's rather obvious that they worked hard to get the name of Satan in there. I think they did, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I know Lucifer means the uh, the light bringer, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's a bit of a pawn, isn't it? It is. But, you know, again, in mounting evidence, you've got the snake head, throne room, you've got the fucking reptilian coming out of hell, which it could be. Yeah. And they, you call your telescope Lucifer. What's going on? You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't, I'm not one of them, Mike. Don't look at me like that. Um... Tell us, Gaffs, what's going on? It's they're all fucking on you, devils, aren't they? Obviously, they're in league with Satan. It's the fucking Catholic Church. There, I said it. <laughs> the elephant in the room is finally going to say. You'd have to be in line with the devil to do the sort of shit they've fucking done and covered up and fucking... Yeah. Cunts. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> fucking thunder cunts. <laughs> their silly daffy fucking outfits and all that. Slap the piss out of a lot of them. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't know, some of them Irish ones are probably pretty hard, so yeah. I won't mess with them. Next WrestleMania, Gaz <laughs> versus every Catholic priest in a yeah. gauntlet match. Line them up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Do I get weapons? No. Yeah, that well. I'll take they that. get the chrono visor though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sell it Yeah, so we know what these ones are going to do when they get in the ring. Okay then. Oh no, that's the future shit. I'll, I won't need help. I'll fuck them up. I'll be a Michael Tag in now and again. Ah, fuck it. I'll, I'll fight those priests. Anyway, let's. What, what else have we got? We've divulged it to lunacy. Should we wrap up? What are our opinions yeah. then? I think they've got some dark shit down there. I think, I, think, I think it mainly is like. I genuinely think that they know that Jesus wasn't real or certainly not what he's mm. made out to be. Possibly. And they know that. And it's like, oh shit, well, we can't tell everyone. Because yeah. that'll just like that means that all of us and a billion Catholics have just got nothing. And we'll have no money. Some popes. And I won't live in this palace anymore. They probably some popes definitely wrote some weird dodgy shit in letters to each other or to someone at some you know in history. They don't think there's loads of things they wouldn't want coming out. There's got to be all sorts of deep dark. Maybe not the alien stuff. I don't know. Maybe it is. We don't know. They'll never share it with us. It's a fucking travesty. And only certain journalists. 
And how are you supposed to recall something that's in there? Like how are you supposed to, so they get, let's say they give you access, you're like, right, what book do you want to get out? Well, I don't know what books are in here. Oh, uh, well, you, you have to ask for yeah, something exactly. specific, and then the librarian mm. will go and find it, mm. and you'll go into a certain room, and it'll be like mm. air controlled as well, because obviously this stuff's really old, so you have to put gloves on mm. in the air, after the right humidity in the, in the room. Uh, like and you have to use tweezers to, to move the pages sometimes, mm. it's so old. Wow. And it's like you, but you only get what you want. You don't get to have a browse through. It sounds boring and a bit shit, to be honest. I don't want to go. <laughs> if they give me full access, yeah, I'd like to. Right, you can you, you go in that little room. Yeah, you can just go and wander the shelves. Oh, come on, guys, it's worth it for the world's largest porn collection alone. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me the oldest, dirtiest thing you've got. <laughs> and I don't mean dust, motherfucker. <laughs> choppy, choppy! <laughs> you don't want to say that in the Vatican. <laughs> you want to go and vet it yourself before you pull it out the fucking mag rack. Oh, yeah. Uh, when I he say says, dirty, you say, bring I mean me the evil. oldest, dirtiest thing you've got. <laughs> you don't know what you're getting. Yeah, and that's true. <laughs> the Vatican I don't want none of that. things. I don't want any of the priest shit. I want some normal women stuff. I want the stuff yeah. that Bishop had in his room, the Carla, the Carla Sutra painted in 16 yeah. panels. They could set up wanking booths along the side of it. Yeah, and <laughs> But their new sideline in <laughs> income is <laughs> dirty old rich businessmen wanking over fucking an porn. antiquated yeah. ancient porn. You have to wear them special gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Just makes it hotter. <laughs> we know you're like a mannequin hand with a rubber glove on it. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys? What do you think? Because I mean, I, I think the, the, I think the, the, the main thing they're hiding down there is that. The, the, the idea, of, and part of the coronavirus, which I'm well behind, yeah. is the ET e e remains, obviously, the Vatican knows about that. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to go for the um, the fact that Jesus wasn't real, but they'd lose too much if it came out. But they'd lose everything. Well, he was real, and he's a bit of a dirty boy, and he'd <laughs> about it a bit. And they don't want anyone to know that. Either way, way. Yeah. we're never going to find out, because no. they're cunts. And I think they're secret Luciferians or something. Yeah. Big snake. It ain't normal. Big snake. <laughs> <laughs> big, big Just ain't normal. Building. Ain't normal. <laughs> you seem quite disturbed by how not normal it is. Like, oh, genuinely disturbed. disturbed. Yeah, they've all got their fucking fingers in it, haven't they? Amongst many other things. Yeah. Things they shouldn't be in. Really shouldn't be in. Oof. So, yeah, let's show you. Uh, that, that's it, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think mean, that's it. We, we all do the hard and shit. Yep. Yeah. That? I mean, I mean, all of it's true, but certainly the chronovisor definitely is. Yeah, I'd say so. Would you like a bit of weird news that links to this? Go on then. Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. Pregnant nun says, "Quote: It was the Holy Spirit." Hey. Honestly, I God swear. Sake. A nun from the monastery of uh, Las Rojas in uh, anyone who happened with the Spanish uh, Val uh, Valladolid. Valladolid. <laughs> no. It's in Spain. <laughs> I don't know. She's 29 years old. She caused a revolution when Ooh. she said she was three months pregnant. She didn't admit that she had sex with a priest or visit to the monastery. She said the child had grown magically in her womb. They wrote that as his. <laughs> and without sex. And this is a quote. I don't want to offend anybody, but I to be the Holy Spirit. There's no other explanation because I've never had sex with a man. The Holy Spirit visited me in my dreams and fertilised me. I'm not saying that I'm the new Virgin Mary. That will be a sin of vanity. Quote, and, uh, yeah, but you are, though, aren't you? You had sex with someone, love, and, you, and you're trying to what Mary did. I, what the fuck? At the Vatican, Rome, they are sceptical of these claims and they are investigating about it. So, what, they're going to go up to... Hang on, uh, the first suspect's the baker. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit of the monastery and carried the bread in every morning. Yeah, he He's could hide his bone behind the baguettes. <laughs> He's got a croissant <laughs> stuck on his dick. Uh, <laughs> nothing to see here, just a baguette. Just Del carrying the baguette. <laughs> Delivering the baguette. <laughs> in I go and out again. And in I go. I love to deliver the bread. <laughs> I bet she's hot as well, isn't she? You can't see her face, sadly, but yeah, they sends her face out. Maybe, mm. what? What if it's true? Ah, fuck <laughs> it's the end times. 
<laughs> oh, we've got at least 30 hey, odd years. There's always a possibility that it's true. Uh, yeah, I guess. But, well, I'll tell you what, push her off a cliff. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't mean that. But, you know. Well, no, I mean, it's a bad idea. <laughs> but it means but it's a good idea in terms of testing. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, if she is, if it is truly the Southern yeah. Guard, then surely some angels will turn up and lift her back up. It's a bit risky, though, isn't it? It is a bit risky. It's easier to test his sperm. Yeah, so it is to do a DNA test. Yeah. yeah. From all the suspects, the baker, yeah. the butcher, the candlestick maker. Yeah, yeah you're right. That's definitely yeah. an easier way to yeah. find Damn it, Gaz, you and your fucking <laughs> witch hunting ideals. <laughs> Push her off the cliff, that'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. And well, that's, why okay. we never, that's why we never see any of Gaz's ex girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming with the fishes. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, What's next in the news? An Egyptian archaeologist is haunted by cursed dreams of mummies after opening a sarcophagus. Oh, <laughs> oh, we He's on the east tail upon us. We were doing this last week, but you were too ill. Oh, oh mate. An archaeologist was left terrified after the mummy he apparently disturbed came back to haunt him in oh, his dreams. Oh, he did stuff with the mummy, oh, didn't he? Why did you touch he the sampled mummy? it. <laughs> he sampled it. <laughs> 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 There's nothing about necrophilia with a no nonce rule. How did you get away with that? He sampled the mummy. He sampled the mummy. Oh, I feel like I could have Jimmy Sour episode. It was oh, Christmas. Man. We brought it down a notch. It's cursed. The only way to rid the curse is to wear the mummy's penis around his neck. <laughs> no, it isn't. That's all the article says. That's just uh, my kind of flight of fancy. <laughs> Um, the curse of the pharaohs is an alleged spell said to be cast upon any person who disturbs the mummy of a powerful Egyptian. This curse, which apparently does not differentiate between thieves and archaeologists, is said to cause bad luck, illness or even death. Since the mid-20th century, many historians have argued the curse is real due to the unexplainable circumstances that occur after the ancient coffin is opened. Or it is more likely breathing in that mould that's developed for the last <laughs> 3,000 years. He drank some of that sarcophagus juice. Oh, <laughs> or yeah. they're drinking a sarcophagus <laughs> juice. No. Maybe it was a tradition. After he bummed the mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Savelling the mummy, Mike. Savelling the mummy. <laughs> it's a new verb. Um, Zahi Hawass is an Egyptian archaeologist and former Minister of the State for Antiquities Affairs. I think I've seen him on documentaries, actually. He's usually that oldest guy who says, no, you can't go in there. It was the same. I think he did a couple of spots on ancient aliens. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Someone would have seen him. He claims to have discovered the Valley of the Golden Mummies at uh, Bahia. Ba that's, that's a place. Bahia. Yeah. And experienced the curse first hand. <gasps> the huge burial sites in the Western Desert have since been uncovered to be home to more than 10,000 mummies. During the excavation, a 71-year-old stumbled across two child mummies that he and his team removed and put on display at a museum. That's gruesome. However, the Netflix documentary Top Ten Secrets and Mysteries revealed how the finding apparently came back to haunt him. He claimed he was haunted in his dreams by the two child mummies. At first, just the faces of the mummies would appear, but later he dreamt of them stretching out their arms towards his throat. Mm. When they were reunited with their father, the nightmares stopped. So, curse the mummy. <laughs> or just some guy with bad dreams. Or some guy that spends a lot of time looking at mummies. Yeah. I mean, he's chief of the state of affairs for antiquities. Uh, if I play video games right before I go to bed, I dream about that video game. Mm. It happens all the time. So yeah, this guy spent like years looking at his fucking mummies and of course he's yeah. got dreams. Or was it a curse? Daft sod. No. Or was it a curse? Nah. Remember Howard Carter, my namesake, probably a relation, famous Egyptologist, fucking found two to Carter. Fucking relation. Could be, don't know. I he's, think, that, I think he's the answer definitely is, not. You don't know that. I do. He's got the last and the same last name, he could be. He's definitely not related to you. How do you know? I just know. Do you see the same dash and flair amongst me and you and me? No. Right, let's move on. The same school duggery and. <laughs> and grave robbing. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. Thieving bastard. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> All the best grave robbers are from Dorley. <laughs> but, uh, mm -hmm. I don't doubt that. Whether in Egypt or Maidley. <laughs> well, what do you think of this fucker? Well, then? I think the article answers it there. It says, Today, archaeologists wear protective masks when entering some, such resting places. They are aware that bacteria active in the decomposed organic material can enter open wounds and spread infection. So you could breathe in some, like, a uh, mummy. Yeah, a bit of yeah, mould. Yeah, yeah and have, like, years. fever dreams. Yeah, the sweats and that. And yeah, before you know it, you're dreaming of mummies. Well, yeah, plausible. Sounds plausible to me, in my simple mind. And there's a bit of a... You ever heard the Brenda from Forest incident? UFO incident? No. Oh, wow. It's probably an episode. Oh, um, okay. Actually, one of the few I'm not behind. Wow. Ooh. Fuck me. It's known as the British Roswell. Have I never heard of this? Because you don't watch as much UFO programs oh, yeah, as me. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> It has been studied by the British government, UFO experts, military investigators, conspiracy theorists and reality TV shows and written about in dozens of books and hundreds of magazines and websites. It's best known as the 1980 Brendisham Forest incident and has been considered unexplained until possibly now. An anonymous tip from an alleged insider to a British UFO investigator has led to a stunning revelation that the Rendlesham Forest incident may have actually been an elaborate prank performed by the Special Air Service, the SAS, <laughs> of the British Army on US Air Force personnel stationed at two former RAF bases nearby as revenge for alleged mistreatment by the US military. Is any of this true? If this gets turned into a movie, this should be the opening line. They call us aliens. Right, we'll show them what aliens really look like. With a British accent. Now, Dr. David Clark, who I've heard of, he's a, a noted sceptic of these things, admittedly. He's a lecturer at Sheffield Hallam University and recognised UFO expert for Britain's Ministry of Defence and the media. Says, What British Special Forces soldiers said after their alleged experience with the US Air Force, Clark reveals in a detailed article on his website. He received this info about over three years ago from a person claiming to be an SAS insider who told him it's about time the truth is revealed. According to the insider, SAS soldiers secretly parachuted into RAF Woodbridge on an August 1989 night to test the US security at the site. Radar detected the paratroopers despite the black parachutes and the soldiers apprehended, interrogated for 18 hours and allegedly beaten up. During the entire ordeal, the Americans referred to them as unidentified aliens, a descriptive but innocent term that the British took as an insult. So, quote, After their release, the troopers made no complaint of their rough treatment, but were determined to get their own back on the US Air Force for the beating that they had received. The insider explained that the insulting aliens comment inspired the Special Forces to plan a UFO prank, he was told the soldiers used black helium balloons and remote controlled kites to carry lights and coloured flares into the sights of the US base personnel, triggering a panic response that the British thoroughly enjoyed. Mm. But then things started to get out of hand. We quote, no. Unfortunately, a senior US officer, which is Lieutenant Colonel Holt, who he makes a lot of money speak from this, but about this, by the way, mm. tends to show up on a lot of documentaries. I assume mm. he takes money for them. Goes on the speaking circuit. Yeah, probably. Led the US contingent out into the forest on the second night and took along his tape recorder. The hovering and whizzing lights were sufficiently impressive for him to send a report to the MOD. Someone in London recalled the events of the previous August and questions were asked. A few red faces, but also some satisfaction and amusement followed. Uh, the US Air Force was reassured of a very senior level and no UK investigation was undertaken for obvious reasons. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I, don't that. <laughs> I like it. Mm. I think it's something. It's, it's, it's very um, army humour. Mm. Sounds plausible. <laughs> Sounds but, plausible, doesn't it? Sounds plausible yeah. to me. But Kite. the guys who keep telling this story, there's a few of them. We will do an episode on this. It'll probably be a multi-parter. It's a big story. The one who was like this low-level security guard, effectively U.S. Air Force police. Mm. He has changed his story so mm. much. He's added to it. He's taken away. Next thing you know, he's fucking touching the object, oh. uh -huh. right? And then going back to his bunk after being interrogated, getting his notepad out, uh -huh. and writing down all these strange alien symbols for like two hours. 
He's, he's came to in remote viewing. That's because it's and, you know, and he's. Ch- I, I don't actually go for this one as a. I, I don't. And I like this story, but I thought you guys might have heard of this actually. Yeah. yeah. So, because I'd never heard this tale, and I thought, mm. ah, you know what? I like that. It's very military humour, I think. It's yeah, very it's British plausible, army humour. Sounds plausible to me. They think me. we're fucking aliens, all right. They know the Yanks are a bit alien happy, don't they? Yeah. Mm. Well, so, yeah. There's some remote controlled kites flying through the trees. Have it. Flares on them. Right. Is that the last news story? Mm-hmm. Yep. So does that mean it's time... For full Alex? For the one and only. Full Never Alex. go full Alex. The most popular game show in this flat. Were you trying to get crazy with this scene? Don't you know I'm loco? The idea is simple. Mike finds a couple of clips of random weirdos he finds on the net, and then he pits them against the arch overlord of insanity himself, Mm -hmm. Saint, one of the show Saints, Alex Jones. We don't mean we really love him, he's just... He's an ironic patron. He's an saint. ironic patron, so. And um, we decide who goes more full Alex. Who goes full Alex this week? Because you should. He can go a little bit, Alex, can he, guys? Yeah, halfway. Yeah, halfway. <laughs> never, never go full, though. Never go full. Ever. Who we got first, Mike? First up. Uh, it doesn't say who it is. Is Hillary Clinton the whore of Babylon? <laughs> right, hey. right, okay. This was very connected to the 2016 run-up to the election with Hillary Clinton. Uh, the WikiLeaks revealed that there were occultists around her who believed that she was actually the fulfillment right. of that those experiments in the desert called the Babylon working, mm-hmm. where the founder of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, and actually the founder of the Church of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, they get together, they're conducting the Babylon working, ritual sex magic for one purpose, to bring through a dimensional veil into our reality the archetype device feminine, the whore of Babylon, right, yeah. to incarnate it within uh, a female that he believed would grow up, he wrote about it in his biography, she'll grow up, she'll become an influential, worldwide known feminist who will help give rise to the Antichrist. Mm-hmm. They believed that that was Hillary Clinton. Mm-hmm. Uh, in one of the other programs, uh, maybe we can get into all the details about why that is so. And the importance of that uh, that's been announced now, that Hillary Clinton is very likely going to run for president again, again. in 2020. But guess what? In 2020, she will be 72 years old. Ah, this is one of the most, again, one of the most important occult markers. Uh, and it's going to again cause the occult to surround her to believe that she is the incarnation of that entity, which, by the way, one year after this child was supposedly born in 1947, the year Hillary Clinton was born, mm-hmm. another reason they believe she is, mm-hmm. Jack Parsons wrote a book called Book of the Antichrist. And in that book, he says that this one-year-old child now, the spirit of it came to him in a vision, said, I'm alive, I'm on the earth, I'm doing well, I'm going to grow up and help the Antichrist come to power. And oh, by the way, my name, this was in <laughs> one line of yes. the Book of Antichrist mm-hmm. written in 1948. My name is Hilarion, which is the arcane Hillary. Yes. So you have to ask yourself, why did the occultists around her believe that? Well, mathematically, who else was named Hillary, born in 1947, that became an internationally known feminist that has the power to take the reins of the most powerful nation on Earth? No, I, I need to explain who Jack Parsons was to you guys, do I? I don't know. Jack Parsons. Who is he? Jack Parsons was a NASA, a brilliant NASA rocket engineer and also a practicing Satanist. What? He did live with L. Ron Hubbard for a while and they did sex magic and stuff to the point where L. Ron Hubbard eloped with uh, Parsons' wife. <laughs> After he owed Parsons quite a lot of money. Was Parsons but, the one talking or listening? No, Jack Parsons was a guy doing the ritual accounts. He was a guy with Alan Hubbard. He was the one who oh, right, right, did it. Okay. They conceived the child, Hillary, right, right, right. in their sex magic rituals with each other's girlfriends and wives. Well, I, yeah, sounds plausible. There's a lot of dick slinging and drugging going on, and you know. And then Jack Parsons a year later wrote a book from the future Hillary, saying that she's now helping the Antichrist. 
<laughs> and that she's going to be 72 in 2020, and that is an important number for occultists, apparently. I'm not sure of that one. I've not heard that. Um, so there you go. That's all the proof you need. Boom, bald guy has it. Tom Horn, his name is. Tom Horn. Little Tom Horn. What's weird is he looks like the sort of bloke you should be selling your double glazing or something. <laughs> Instead, he's babbling. This he looks like, in that shit. pose, he looks like a friendly granddad. Yeah. Racist granddad. Friendly racist, well, friendly friendly and not racist to you because you're quite little at this point. Friend, He's going to die before you get to teenage years. He looks like, because he's quite big, friendly granddad who's still strong and can come round and put up your fence. So. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe. <laughs> Help your dad put up the fence. Yeah. No, put up my fence. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're sitting there. It's a blizzard outside. It's coming. They said we did it in 1922, Sonny. I'm having a beer in a fag. Show me how you did it in the old days. 1922? Oh. Fucking hell, he's like 96. <laughs> Anyway, who's next? That was nuts. And he's still putting on fence. All right, who's next? <laughs> next Seamus. up. Who's next up, Josh Bernstein. 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 Uh, Bernstein. Oh, oh my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Bernstein. Oh. Josh Bernstein wants to see America operate just like North Korea. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what we should do? When President Trump builds the wall, here's what he should do. Number one, we should have the new Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman, Lindsey Graham. Hopefully he's, uh, he's grown uh, some balls here, and he's actually going to be a good uh, Senate Judiciary Chairman. He needs to subpoena all the players in the deep state, all of them. Comey, Mueller, McCabe, Strope, Page... Nelly or Bruce or Weissman, Rosenstein, Loretta Lynch, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few. Get them down there, and when they come down all at once, padlock the door. Padlock the door and instruct the Sergeant of Arms of the Senate and the Capitol Police to zip tie these scumbags and put handcuffs on them and drag them into a tribunal. And you can set up the tribunal through executive action. That is something the president can do. So therefore, you could have a trial on the same day that you arrest these creeps and put them in Guantanamo Bay. Or better yet, when you build the wall, force them, like in North Korea, to have to build it. And let them wear their three and four and five thousand dollar suits. Wouldn't you love to see Hillary Clinton in an orange pantsuit with a shovel in her hand? I know I would. We ought to do that. We, these people need to go down for the count. These people are seditious. They are treasonous. And they need to be held accountable. I think he's drunk. <laughs> he sounds like me. <laughs> Not what he's saying, just like slurring his words a bit. Uh, yeah, he's, um... Uh, well... He's a bit daft, isn't he? Because that's never going to happen. Well, I don't want to see a, a 60-something-year-old woman shoveling stuff to build a wall. That just yeah. seems a bit... Sadistic. Well, I kind of like that bit. I mean, I must say that. I don't <laughs> want to say that fist strikes again. I don't want to say no. that like, Hillary is like a saint. She's not a saint, Hillary. She's not crooked. She's not crooked enough to be a saint on our show yet. She's but I mean, I good. just like all these rich pricks just for one day to walk in someone else's shoes. Oh, one day. We're not bit, talking about prison sentences you know, and hard well, labour. Yeah, no. What, no, one they day, fine. Bit, they might right. show a bit more empathy to people. One day, I'll give you one day, that's fine, but like 20 years of hard labour, I don't want to see... <laughs> Building it. Trump's wall. Building Trump's wall, I don't want to see like pensioners doing that. <laughs> well, he's mm. right maybe about taking these people down who've done bad things, but... But then you've got to take everyone on your side down as well. But maybe he hasn't really thought things through to, you know, the logical, you know... A good punishment. And, you know, stick with the way the judicial system works. Well, it doesn't work. He has no oh, point. Just imagine if them. some oh, guy right, then fucking work him to death. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine if some guy got in there no, just, and on that executive order yeah. that he's just going to give to Trump to sign, he writes mm. in Donald Trump. Well, like somewhere in the middle, and Trump doesn't read it. Does his signature with a flourish, holds it up, <laughs> and they just, the the guys come in and for some reason zip tie and handcuff them. <laughs> Didn't get that one. Well, Didn't get that one at all. They're sort of a but, kangaroo court. But then just trial them in one day. day. Trial the president in one day. Yeah. Oh, sorry, mate. You're on the bill. Uh. <laughs>
Off, oh, off to build your own wall, pal. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> you can go and build it. Won't get much building done with them tiny hands. Oh, I guess you must want a shovel then, what else? What? So who's... Don't forget those bone spurs, Mike, you'll get off with it. Oh. <laughs> so what's uh, the man himself got to say to finish off the game? So let's just have a quick recap. First bloke said... Hillary was conceived in a sex party <laughs> with L. Ron Hubbard and Jack Parsons. <laughs> and she's no, not the Antichrist, but certainly his helper. Yeah, mm. she's an entity known as the Whore of Babylon. The Whore yeah. of Babylon, and her name is Hilarity, or something Hilarious like that. Or something. Hilarious, and that's the ancient form of Hillary. Okay. And, um, <laughs> He said that it does sound fucking yeah. mental, doesn't it? Now, and second guy is telling me that he thinks that Hillary, Obama, et al. should be locked up in prison camps and made to build a wall by executive order in a kangaroo court <laughs> and just being zip-tied and handcuffed. OK, all right, so that's Alex got to say. Alex Jones wants you to know he's sorry for his outbursts. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he's already won. <laughs> it's pointless. <laughs> You've paused that. Eat your ass! Place. You just get that through your stinking traitorous heads! Excuse me, I apologize. I have a lot of Christian affiliates. I am a Christian. <laughs> but I will stomp your head in if you start a fight with me, you thug scum! Anyways, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Bunch of cowards! <laughs> excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna control myself right now. She is a demon damned to hell! Excuse me, I've been trying to control myself, trying to be professional about this, but at a certain point, I just am just really getting pissed. Excuse me. We're not going to have Pepsi with baby flavoring in it. I mean, what the hell have we become? Excuse me. If I didn't have a liberal from New York in the bathroom, I couldn't wipe my ass. Excuse me. I apologize. We have a family audience. That was wrong, and I won't do it again. You think I'm a coward like you? I'm sorry. You dishonorable, cowardly pieces of garbage. Excuse me. Ah, coming for you. Coming for you. We know what you're doing. Ah, sorry. Piles of manipulative lying crap. <laughs> oh, excuse me. They're going to burn in hell. Excuse me. This is a time bomb. Oh, excuse me. You're a big tough guy, buddy. You just ran into me. Ah, how do you like that? Now hit me in the face and see what happens. Pop. I'm sorry, there's an attack on the species by a guild of psychopaths and they must be defeated. I'm going to sell them excuse me. We're going to make a list of seven stupid girls, excuse me. Um, I, I think first guy's got it. Yeah, I think this week that was a nice compilation of Alex <laughs> being ridiculous. Well, he didn't actually say anything. We didn't get any of his mad ranting. <laughs> so I think the first guy with the fact that like, Hillary was conceived like a science experiment at a party. No, no, in, a, in uh, an occult experiment uh, yeah. at a party, yeah, featuring one of the nation's most prominent I mean, I think she's, at the time. Don't get me wrong, I think she's Actually, a cunt. Actually, not the time, to be fair. I think she's a cunt as well, but is she the whore of Babylon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The L. Ron Hubbard oh, helped these, these fucking people. That's just some bloke. The second one is just some bloke having a drunken rant about what he thinks should happen. Yeah. First guy gets it. What's his name again? Are we added Tom to Horn. Tom Horn. Tom Horn. Tom Horn. Little Tom Horn. We need to find more little Tom, Tom Horn. Tom. The friendly granddad who oh. believes in sex magic. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, well, he's got it this week. That's it then, I suppose. Congratulations, Tom. Yeah. Welcome to the show. You beat Alex. The horny bastard. <laughs> is that a debut win? We don't get many debut wins. No. That's true, we don't know. No, no, he's no. pushing a level of insanity that no one's ever thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Pat might have won his debut, but he's an established loon. That was one of the strongest debuts. <laughs> he's he's coming with some tough end. He's like, had one fight yeah, and now yeah, he's yeah, getting yeah, pushed yeah, to be Intercontinental Champion. Well, I hope he pops up again. <laughs> the wrestling parlance. Let's hope it wasn't a one-it wonder, yeah. and we'll see him again sometime. Bless him. So yeah, do you want to uh, do the bit, Ben? Right, I'm gonna say um, thank you for listening. Please follow us on Facebook at uh, Cutting to the Ball and the Post of the Apocalypse. Yeah. On Twitter at Apocalypse Ball. Uh, what else? Please like and review the page. Leave us a nice review. That'd be really generous. Or if you'd like any topics, send us a message. Communicate with us. Mm. We need to get our rating up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to say that I've been Ben. Thanks for listening. 
Don't drink the flavour aid and don't join a cult. Uh, I've been Gaz. Free Biff Tannen. I've been Mike. Thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. Hey.